Great riches of his greats, Berakaya, the blessings of Yah. They are beyond the comprehension of man. So we are somewhat a people that's lost in this massive knowledge, the great expanse of revelation of Torah. We need men to stand before us that are wise men and strong and have a depth of wisdom that goes beyond the simplicity of our minds. So today, Yah's will, I want to elocute, to speak with veracity, with simplicity, having every line upon line, every precept upon precept. We must draw from the littleness of the meot of the well. We may understand the great depths and the riches of Torah. We need that. We need that. So we greet you all, Gisraya, Shabbat Shalom, here in Yerushalayim, the city. Where the Shalom of Yah is Lomas. We instructed in the covenant riches of the Berushites, the riches of his alliance, his allegiance, and his pledge. <coughs> Unto Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. So we can rejoice in the dynamics of that once we understand the beauty of it. We just don't have that. And so that's why we are constantly faltering and looking to every alternative but what truth says. And so we must find the depth of that. And that can only be found in one place, and I will teach on that today. I want to read a letter. It is, this is an ignorant generation. I find it more profoundly ignorant every day that I deal with the immaturity of men and women. There is no sincere motive of dedication unto Yah. And so I hear from those infrequently. A lot of times people don't want to deal with me. I was sitting there yesterday, Ach Simeon and I, one call and said, I want to come and check you out. I said, no, sir. You will not come to examine me and check me out. I like the young person's spirit. And then the person said, because the person had a plethora of questions, I don't need to ask even the questions that I've written down to ask you. So you will not come and examine me. If anything, we will, we will come. We will sit down and enjoy the abundance of his riches, of his blessings. We'll eat and sing and rejoice. But I will not allow you to come and check me out. By your opinion, you determine whether I am who I am. I said, not so, sir. Not here. You can't do that with others, but never with me. I won't allow you. We have so many weak men today, it's pathetic. And they literally think they're strong. I had an old man tell me yesterday, I will outwork you. I say, you will not outwork me. So you don't even have the veracity of strength. You don't even have the physical mobility to outwork me. And when you were my age, you still could not do it. I say, well, I would not have even allow you to do it. <clears throat> so his retort was, well, I, I said, I tell you what, oh man, this is what I do in an average day. Can you do that? So don't tell me you will outwork me. I let no man outlabor me in the physical applications of work. I let no man outlabor me in the spiritual applications of life. No man. You may labor hard, but I'm laboring. So I let no man, and I am not boasting. I know who I am and who I stand for. I'm so glad as a young ignorant man 
that when you began to move in my ruach, immediately, not some distant time, that I would try to rationalize what Torah says, even in all of my ignorance, I believed it, to the loss of mother, brothers, sisters, or any kind of physical associ association. It made me no different. He knew I was a warrior from day one. Most men are not warriors, they're little boys. They're not warriors. You see, I want to be like one of David warriors, Mahalaya or Uriah. Most men are not warriors, little boys. The immature have no strength by the love of Torah. And so from day one, when I would hear the things that were right, I didn't have to question them. I didn't try to go behind the back to say, well, answer this for me. No, I was able to listen. And to draw from the depths of that, and I would go to my concordance. I said to my Isha, I bless y'all for a computer now because I had to do all this by hand. And search for hours and hours and hours. No, not with the television on watching a damn football game. I would search until I found those instructions. And then it would add to instructions. So we don't have that today. So men today think because they have a little knowledge of things that they have a great wisdom of the matter. It's not so. I'll read this letter and what and how I responded and how the person responded back because I was going to shut him up if he had responded again. Maybe listen, listening. He says to me, Shalom sir. I have been going through every Hebrew dictionary that I can find. Ah, that's somewhat suspect his statement. He showed me in the letter how delusional he is. He said, cannot find what? That states the word shua or shua or any form, derivative of this word's meaning. So to be saved or salvation who came upon the unfounded so-called proof. Who has the proof? It's what this young individual is asking. That putting the name of the supreme sovereigns yeah, in any way change the definition or the afford mission, mentioned word. What these dictionaries and commentaries do show is that the word yashach, is the word that should be used with the great Yah's name. Just ask it. No, you were not just asking. You were showing the immaturity of your arrogance. The man said he has searched every dictionary. Well, I just responded from one dictionary. I pray Yah bless and keep you. Shalom, he tell me his name. So I respond this way. Your statement is a sure sign of your youth and immaturity of the knowledge of Torah. See, I don't play around with this generation. I say to this individual, you have not truly searched. You have embellished that. It is not the truth. I said to this person, you are not trying to prove truth, my friend. No, sir, you're not. You have not done your homework. The word salvation in the language of my forefathers is pronounced this way. Yahushua. Which derives, or it is a feminine passive, uh, of the word Yahshua. How do you pronounce this word? So I say the phonetics of it will give you the sound of shua. Now you say the word, my friend. They both have the same meaning because it is a root. I put that in the letter of the word yasha. So the little fellow writes me back. Well, it is the root of that word. So, comma, 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 and so what, what? 
it is the same word. Now this is the ignorance of this generation. It's arrogant. It's full of pride. And so this is a generation that literally thinks that it can pronounce or say anything it wants to, to anyone. And yet when they run across me, it is a different world. Because I can see the immaturity of this person's youthfulness. They actually think that they know something that no one else knows. I can show him thousands of Hebraic dictionaries, so he said he has searched them all. What immaturity. What immature mindset. And that is predominant among the people of young. And so you wonder why there is no discerning, or if Yahweh say no, nacha, to recognize, to acknowledge, to see, to comprehend with a great breath of understanding, why there is no discerning of the book. The book, Sefa, must be discerned. It must be. And we don't understand the power of that discernment. Not this ritual lie we have been taught among the spirit of Hordham. That is not discerning, my friend. It is when one has the ability to acknowledge, see the depths of the spiritual enlightenment, and not only that, but to equate that with the intelligence of intelligentsia or intellectual, and to speak that whereby the wisdom of that is open unto the simplest of all, that all men can understand. And that is not a prominent trait among the nation of Yisra'ya. The book discerned. Not every man can discern the book. Not every man can discern the book. They don't even have the applications to discern the book. And when one has the ability to nakha, there's a great regard for the book. There's a great respect. There's a great observation that one jenach, that one guards the integrity of the book, that one guards the essence of this great book, because one has acknowledged that this is the only true book of life. And you see the representation of that in the countenance of uh, the awe, oh, the ma'or oh, of a man's expression. There's light. There's a profound testimony. There's wisdom that personifies in that man, in that woman. We don't have that today. We have a bunch of silly, immature women late with sin. They're wicked too. Anytime someone will come to you and say anything wickedly, yeah. That I or this is my performance. No achin come to me talking that way. Because I will rebuke them. You know something is sick in that damn head. I don't give a damn who it is. And the only reason someone will say something that is so utterly wicked to you. Is because they have perceived that there is something there in you. That associates with them. That you are as wicked or they perceive that. So they can trust your wickedness because you will guard their wickedness. That's not love. I'm going to teach today the book. Discern. The book. In order for us to un understand that, we must begin at the precepts to understand what the book is. This is a generation that doesn't understand the sefer. The writing of the book. The hatab. It is inscribed, it is etched, it is engraved. So we don't understand that. Why is it that we as a nation of people do not understand? Do we ever ask ourselves that question, why I don't understand? Why is it that we cannot discern the truth of the book? That there is a great reverence for the book. There's a great excitement for the book. There's a great rejoice and that's what this book teaches. There is an impediment. And so in order for us to understand the discernment of the book or the book discerned, we must begin with the foundation of principles and elements that are necessary in our lives 
to begin to understand the book. I want to begin out of the book of Shirach, because the wisdom of Shirach speaks so profoundly on this matter. We must be able to nakha. We must know without a shadow of a doubt. And as we began to develop and understand the principles of the book, uh, there is a great respect that we observe. Uh, and we regard everything that Yah speaks unto us. Uh, we acknowledge the principles of the book. And then we do it with great honor. And so the messenger of Yah Shirak, chapter 9, verse 15. It commands us, Yisraya, Shirak, Chapter 9 and verse 15. Yah says, let your conversation or your lifestyle, let the substance of whom you are, let your conversation be with men of Binah, with understanding. Our conversation, our dwelling, our association must be with men of Binah. Men that can discern. When a man is a man of understanding, he has the power to discern. He recognizes what is of Yah. He discounts that which is not of Yah. So our conversation, our lives, our living uh, must be around men and bath of his own uh, of understanding. Must be. Let it be around. Let our association be with those, uh, with men of understanding. And then he commands us, there is a sava, there is a, an instruction by his own power to dictate. He said, and let your discussion, let your words uh, be about the Torah of the Most High. Yeah. Now is our discussion about the Torah, or is it about our frivolous folly and our ignorance? Yeah. When you're on a man, when you're on a zakenim of understanding, uh, your conversation will be about Torah. When you're on a man of no understanding, your conversation uh, is full of folly and immaturity. So our lives, our lifestyles, what emanate from us, uh, must be about the Torah. It must be about the Torah. And you will know that a man has the binah, he has a discernment, he has a delightment uh, because his conversation uh, is in the Torah. And he talks about the Torah and he expressed uh, the beauty of the Torah. You will know that he's a matter of understanding. The book discerned. The book Nakha, the opening of the book. How do we open this book? Why is it that we don't understand the seasons, the times, uh, and the mishpatim of Yah? So in order for us to grow in the perspectives of Yah, we must be around those kinds of men. Now it did not say daughter, but the man is the head of the woman. And so as he speaks with understanding, uh, she grows exponentially. He did not make the issue to be back here. She, he made her to be by the sight of man. You understand? And her beauty is her submissiveness as uh, he learns her submissiveness uh, as he submits unto Yah. This is a damnable, stupid generation. Most men want a wife just because of some sensual, sexual proudness. It is so filthy and dirty. They don't know how to love not a damn thing. When a man has the pure love of Yah in him, you will see it. When a man has a love for Torah, you will know that you're around a man of understanding, a man that can discern. And he's a wise man. See, why is it that we don't discern the book? I want to break this down. Is that all right? I'm going to break it down. He says... Let your discussion be about the Torah of the Most High. When a man has the binah, I shall, my friend. When he has the understanding, it implies in the etymology of this word binah, it is that, that that man, that person, has the ability to express the plethora of the depths 
of all matters of wisdom concerning the book. That's what that man possesses. That's what he has. He has the knowledge, he has the ability, he has the wisdom to express the great plethora of the great wideness, breadth, and depths of Torah. That's why our conversations must be with men of understanding. We're spending enough time with our conversations clowning the bath of Tizayon, which are folly, foolish conversations of immaturity. The men, their exploits, you know you can't come to me that way. Eh? And the women, their conversations, the bath is just very silly and mature and is not of any substance. And our conversation should be all about Torah. We should discuss Torah. It refines us. It makes you beautiful. It refines your mind. It opens up the book to you. And nobody wants that today. So you wonder why the women are walking like some uh, two-cent uh, rejection in all the earth and the men are simple and stupid? Because our conversations are not based upon this principle. Our lifestyles. Listen, I don't think of a subject to find scripture to justify it. My subject is in the scripture. I'm going to talk about the book and discerning the book. Why we cannot discern the book. So I don't need a pithy scripture to support a subject. No. What I teach is the subject that support Torah. So we must be gone as Sharak says here that we must let not somebody use the word A-L-L. Does he not? He says let all cool. Let all, all your discussion be about the Torah of the Most High. That's what our discussion should be about. Whether you're making clothing, uh, it should be about the beautiful bath of Zion, uh, the high woman, how her hands were busy. Whether it's in the garden, it should be about those things. Tell me what does the world, uh, or your conversation about the world, what does that produce? Uh, it doesn't produce one damn thing of substance. But when you talk about Torah, it produces a life. It refines you. It reproves you. It reveals your wickedness, Yisrael. There is an impediment in our lives that we, we cannot understand the book, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Well, what is the substance of the book? What is the book all about? I want to show something quickly here in the book of Ibram, Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews. And also in the book of Psalms, Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, unto Helium, Psalms chapter 40. And this is the power of Yahshua as he speaks, Psalms 47 verse, as he speaks of this profound testimony in the first person. Psalm chapter 40 verse 7. He says, then said I, then said Yahshua. This is not David speaking here. This is the prophecy. This is the Nabah. The Nabah, the singing of great uh, excitement and rejoicing uh, of the revelation of this profound truth. Uh, it says this, Yisrael. Then said I, this is what Yahshua says. Uh, he said, I want you to own me. I want you to understand. Uh, he says, I enter in. I bow. I come. I come. Psalms 40 and verse 7. This is what he said. I come. Uh, I come in what? The, the Mikgillah. I come in the wholeness and the volume uh, of what? The book. Of the book. He said, I come in the volume of the book. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will. Oh, yeah, now that's what the volume of the book is. To do the hafiz, the yasun, the pleasure of Yah, what delights his bosom, what makes his heart fat. The book is written. He came in the volume of the book to what? To do the pleasure of the Abba. Then why is the volume of the book revealed unto us? That we may do all things that pleases our Abba. He came in the volume of the book. He said for the book it is hatab. It is written. It has been prescribed and inscribed. Well what is this book about? 
There are many topics on the book of Yesha, the book of the war of Yisra'ya, many books of the Bible, but we're talking about a book of Torah, of Chizveh. He came, he entered in. When Yahshua truly enters into our hearts, he enters by the revelation of the volume of the book. There's a volume. So we don't have time that our conversations are about folly and foolishness and frivolity. It must be about the Torah. You can never understand the volume of this book when your conversation is exchanged from Yah. You will never get understanding beyond to discern, to recognize, to acknowledge, to see and to observe, to guard the power of this volume. Because you can never get enough, as David said, feed me, uh, until there is no more satisfaction. Your shoes pronounced, I come in this volume. Uh, Ja'u speaks in Ibram in Hebrews, uh, chapter 10, verse 7. I want to lay the foundation. I come in the Megillah, the volume of this book. Hebrews 10, 7, same prophecy. Uh, Enunciated uh, the same fashion. Then said Yahshua, I come, I enter in. I enter in in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will. Oh, yeah, the precept and the line upon line and the precept. One from the voice of David and one from the messenger Shaul as they spoke of what the volume is. Of what the mech. Gila is. It is the fullness of the riches of the substance of Torah. It is the abundance of the knowledge of Torah. It is the great wisdom of Torah. It is the experience that one experience in the conversation in their lifestyles and them talking Torah that you see the beauty of that and the ma or the shine of that light in their presence. The poor name speaks of the excellence of the knowledge of Torah and not folly and stupidity and immaturity. That's why our conversation, our lives, our dwelling, our conversation must be with men and baptists, I honor of understanding. When one discern, one discern every aspect of you. The Torah shows you everything that is wrong with you. There was no sin until the Torah entered in. And so as long as the volume of the book is expressed, you will see the depth of your depravity, of your wickedness, and the vileness of your damnable nature. And because our conversations are not in Torah, we can never define what is so damn corrupt in us that the Torah will show us the great hasid of Yah and bring us before His altar. We have no damn conscience of that. I'm going to break it down, my son. The book discerned must be discerned. We must have understanding. We must have to be know of Yah. Oh, I know the word understanding. It is expressed in many variants in Torah. Tabun, tabun, to mean one thing. And it also is expressed as shelef. I understand that because I'm a student and I study and I labor to understand what to teach us. You don't need anyone to teach you. Well, you come and teach this. I give you these scriptures. You can come there. No footnotes or, or no notes to ask. I will proceed. I do it this way so I can move expeditiously. So I can move quickly and fast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a book that is paramount and prominent of the great riches of Yah. And that expose unto us the volume. Yeshua is the volume of Yah's hearts. You will never understand the depths of the Creator until you understand His Hamashiach. And so that's why the enemy has our minds in conversations of everything. But what the Torah says. Something is wrong with us when we don't mature. I see myself week to week maturing and I see how sad I spoke to the people of Yah last month. The messages were not of substance to me. If you can't see this progressive growth, something is wrong. 
that even in the time of death, I don't have to regress back to my youthfulness. Something is wrong in you people. Something is twisted in our minds. I want to read something important here. In the book of Exodus, Shemoth. Hallelujah. Exodus 24 and verse 7. It tells us Moshe, he lacha, he seized upon. He acquired the depths of this book because lacha is to buy. So whatever Yah speaks, what he hands to us, we buy it. We buy the truth and sell it not. So lacha gives us the implication that not only did he seize upon it or lay hands upon it, but he bought it. He bought it. Every essence of it and the fullness of it, he bought it. So Moshe lacha, that's why I always say we need students we need to tell me, we need men to labor and study and to define words. Because we miss out on the fullness of Yah's volume and his substance because we are readers. We like to read. And we want to show everybody what we have read. And we want to bring something to someone have no depth of the understanding of it. But we always want to show someone something. You must polish yourself behind what you have read to understand that undoubtedly you don't understand it. Because when a man gets the knowledge of a matter, you will see the light, you will see the ma'o in that man's face. You may have the lettering of the words, and you don't even have the letter of the word in your heart. Because in this book it has been written. He has written the Torah in our hearts and in our minds, in our inward parts. So you didn't even get the letter of the matter. If least, if you had gotten the letter, you would have had substance. You didn't even get a comprehension that was intelligent. Because you cannot articulate the intelligence of it. You don't even know how to articulate the intelligent natures of that matter. You don't know how to do it. Not just nature, but the natures of it. He says in Shemoth Moses and Moshe, he lachahi took just the book. The book of what the berith, the book of the covenant. Who is our Brit Hadassah? Yeshua HaMashiach. He said, Behold, I come in the volume of the covenant, of the alliance, the allegiance of Yah. And he took the book, the book, of the Berith, the covenant, the spoken promises of Yah, the word of Yah. He said, and he began to kara. He began to read with such, with such vocal pitch. That's what Kara is, that you could see the, you could see the, his neck expand. You, you could see the blood vessels. You could see the arteries. And he began to Kara, he began to order to speak. He began to show forth the excellence of this knowledge uh, as he began to read from this book. He said he did that among the people in the audience of the people. And when they heard... As he read the understanding and the wisdom of that, which you to understand, it personified through his ruach, just like Yah, the same ruach that was upon Moshe when he laid hands on Yahushua, the same ruach uh, penetrated his heart. But the same ruach. So as he read to the people, as he opened up the knowledge unto the people, it was understood, and they said, Oh, that Almighty Yahweh has said, we will do it. Hallelujah. And not only will we do it, but we will shemak. Shemak has more than the implication of just hearing it and obeying. It has the implication that one has an intelligent mindset. That one's mind, because one's conversation has been in Torah, they have the same mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. And so they have a developed labah. Their minds are developed. And so they are intrigued by men of understanding. They love the bath of Tizayona that's full of understanding of the Binah of Yah. They have the power to discern that. will direct them properly and say, get that damn silly spirit off of you, man. Yeah. Come on, daughter of Tizayona. You're immature. Stop that. 
You say that today and see the blot you get. It's just the truth. Your conversation is juvenile. It is childish. It is immature. Why is it? This book must be understood. We must discern the elements of this book in this time that we're in. They say we will do all that you command us and we will shemak, we will obey. Obey. It says this now, and Moshe, he took the blood, the dung, and he sprinkled it upon the people, a cleansing, a remission of sin, and said, Behold, the dumb of the Berit, the covenant which Yah has made with you. With what? Concerning? Does it say some of these words? It says all of these Dabarim, all of the promises of Yah. All that Yah has spoken. Now, and so the blood has always sealed the Torah. It was the blood that sealed the Torah, the witness of the Torah in us, Yisra'ya. It is the sprinkling of the dam of Yahshua Hamashiach that seals this which is written in our minds and our inward parts that Yah has hidden it here. And without the dam of Yahshua, there is no sealing of that Torah in one's mind. You understand so he sealed the promises of Yah by the sprinkling of the blood. And in Hebrews, Hebrews 9.19, Shaul, Hebrews 9.19, he resonates the same expression there. Hebrews 9.19, the very same word, Yisrael. There is no covenant without the sprinkling of the blood. And Yah shed his blood for us. He shared his book for us. For us. I want to, before I engage into the depth of this, why is it that we don't understand? I will give us the great depth of what we don't understand. Did not your shoe come in the volume of the book? So is that book closed from us? I want to read this in, in the book of Gilead. Now turn quickly to Revelation. In chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. Yokohan said, and I saw. I saw in the right hand. Yoshua sits swear with the Abba. He sits at the right hand. At the Yad. At the right hand of Yad. He said, I saw the right hand of him that sat on the throne. He said, I saw a book. I saw the book, the same book that was sealed by the dam of Yahshua. He said the book was written within. He has written this book within our hearts. He has written it on the backside. The book covers every aspect. It covers those from, uh, from Abraham, Yitzhak, and Jacob unto us this day and those that will come uh, after us. He said, I saw the writing and I saw what was sealed. I, I could understand the message of the Nabi, Im, the, the men like Daniel, and why it was sealed. He said, I saw the book. It was sealed with seven seals. It was sealed by the perfect revelation of the spiritual matters of Yah. The seventh Ruachim of Yah. The spirit of the Ruach of the fear of Yah. The Ruach of understanding. The Ruach of wisdom. The Ruach of da'at, of knowledge. The Ruach HaKodash. He's a sword seal. Unless a man had the ability or the seals of these great seven seals. The seven Rahim of Yah. I saw it sealed with the seven mighty seals. Seven seals. And I saw a strong Melach proclaiming with a loud voice. Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? No one. Why? Because we don't have the power of this revelation. He is talking about the same book. He is talking about the revelation of this book and to the depths of the wisdom. We, we're looking at something. We love strange things because uh, we have been raised on horror movies uh, and all kinds of folly. Uh, 
metaphorically uh, ideas, concepts, and thoughts uh, that are so far reached that the wicked tells you how it is explained. No, he is saying that those that have the power of this witness of the testimony, he looked high as the old ones would say, and lo, and there was no one found, only the one that sits at the right hand. Uh, that was able to open that. And without the power of the testimony of Yahshua, you're not able to open the book. That's why you don't open the book. That's why we don't give a damn about the book. That's why we don't talk about the book. Because we don't frankly give a damn. You think that this just has implications for this. This is a now Torah truth. It is not something that by and by and over yonder. It is now. Your shoe said I came in the fullness. Is this the fullness of your shoe here? This is part of the fullness, isn't it? This is part of the fullness of your shoe Hamashiach here. You got these YouTube prophets and all of them, these, these drugstore CVS, Walmart prophets. And they go to YouTube and find someone talking about this. And they take what they say and they bring that garbage before you and you buy it. And here stands the true messenger. If you're sure did not come in the volume, is this a part of the volume of the book? Is this not a part of the Megillah? The Megillah? Is this not part of it? So is this volume uh, you're sure here? Sure it is. He came in the volume of the book. And so that book is sealed with the Ruachim, the seven spirits of Yah. That's what it's sealed with. And that's why we must have our conversation with men of understanding. And they have no power, the seven Ruachim of Yah, unless they talk Torah. So when you find jackasses and clowns, foolish old men, hell, it comes a time in our lives, we get all of that, we should have one desire. Foolish old women. That should be only one desire. I'm glad from, from a young boy he made me a warrior. I did not let mama, I didn't give a damn. Glad I have no children. Nothing circumvented to me. Nothing. I didn't care what it was. I didn't care how they felt about me. I didn't care what they said about me. I didn't care about their attitudes toward me. I didn't, none of that troubled me. And you have all men and women that troubles them. How wicked is that man? You tell me he has the knowledge of Torah. How wicked is that old woman? You tell me she has the knowledge of Torah. A conversation with them would not be about Torah. And she will have no power to express the depths of Torah because she spends no damn time with Yah. Neither does he. Because his mind is on the sensual things. Trying to get what he wants. What he desires. I will, man. He doesn't give a damn. If you don't care about truth, how are you going to care about me? You don't give a damn about me. Move it on, Gilead. I got something to fix us today, all right? I don't care if you don't love me. I don't care if you can't appreciate me. You need to buy truth. You've bought enough lies as it is. He says, uh, no man, no man in Hashem I am. So you tell me there was a man or there men in the heavens? That's what he said. Did he say no Melachim? He said no man in heaven. Does it say that? Does it say that? It says just that. No man in heaven nor in the earth. Not one that is in the earth. We are of this world, but we're not in this world. We are of the world. We're in this world, but we're not a part of this world. We need wise men to speak to unravel things from us. That's what we need. He said, in the earth, for nowhere, or under the earth, was able to open, does it say the book? The book, and it's discernment, the book. Neither to even look upon it. And he began to weep and he began to cry. And he said, don't worry, there's one that stands up. Yeah. It's not the greatest of his power within us. Is Joshua not in us, Yisra'ya? Yeah. Is he in us or do we have this false, uh, this false delusion as to who he is? Do we have the testimony that's real in us? Uh, see, he must, I found no man in the earth, but he that sat at the right hand of Yah. If great is he that is in me, uh, if greater is the volume of your shoe that is in me, 
Great is the volume of your sure in me, then there should be a revelation of this profoundness of his truth. We should have men among us of understanding. That's the reason we don't understand Yisrael. Yeah, I will break it down. That's the reason we don't understand the time, the Akharit, the last days. We don't understand judgment because if we did, we will not do the same damn thing over and over. You will not do the same damn thing over and over. And that's one of the Ruachim, that's one of the seven Ruachim, the, the Ruach of Yare, Ayira, the, the spirit of fear. No way we will do the same damn thing and practice things. Uh, and then there is no fear about us. Uh, we will not do it. We will not do it. When one has the power of the perfection of wisdom of Torah, what does that imply? When one hears, one obeys. Uh, when one acknowledges that it is the truth, uh, then they shoot, they turn uh, from the direction that they are progressing in. Uh, that's what that is. Uh, not your silly way because I stumble and I fail, so I'm not perfect. We are complete in your sure. Hallelujah. And the word complete is to me. It is perfect. It is complete. It is thoroughly complete. Well, I'm going to break it down, my friend. I want to slow down because I want to break it down. No man was able. To open the book. That's why we're not able to open the book. Because we don't have the Ruach of Yah. We're not able to open this book. Tell me. Just think. You open books of curious arts and folly. But you won't open this book. You open books of lust. But you won't open this book. Just like in the days when they took, brought all of their curious books of arts and all of their books and they burnt them at the Shulishim feet. We don't burn nothing. We let it burn within our corruption. They brought all of their books. So why is it we don't understand the book though? Why well, we can't discern what is coming out of the book? Why well, we don't know that someone is wise to speak out of the book? When Moshe spoke out of the book of the Berith of the Covenant, they said they heard everything he said. It was revealed unto them. We will do, we will fashion, we will assa all that Yah has command. We will do everything that he has commanded us to do. And we will obey it. And that's what men of understanding, they bring us to the beauty of Torah. And when we hear that, we say, I will do everything that you said, O man. Where are the old men today? Where are the renowned men? Where are the horrid haired old men? That when they walk in the presence, you marvel at them and their strength and their beauty. A bunch of jackasses today. I don't take that back. I'm a part of that. That indicts me and every man. They're a bunch of jackasses we are. Bunch of damn clowns. Know everything but know nothing. This is my... Oldest brother will always say to me, he said, baby boy, don't talk, talking loud, you're talking loud and saying nothing now. Well, that was one of the proverbs of my day. He's talking loud and saying nothing. But he will always warn me, he said, baby boy, don't, don't just talk to be heard, baby boy. When you talk, you talk with something that is sensible. I can say as a young man, we were not, even those that are hung around, we were not clowning about some woman, some this, some sensuality. We were always talking about the political arena. We were talking about those kinds of things. Uh, the plight of the people of the diaspora. We were talking about men like Malcolm X uh, 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 and Stokey Carmichael and Huey P. Newton. Uh, we were talking about those things of uh, the songs of the weather report. You think these boys are calling themselves, the weather report was talking like that back in the days in the 70s. Uh, and we're talking about liberation, Bob Marley, and those kinds of things. That's what our conversation was about. It was about who was the most political or brass, or who had knowledge of the situation of the people of our diaspora, that we can talk with legitimacy from that point with the knowledge and understanding. And I would not let anyone outdo me. I was a reader, absorbed. And I would listen to what they said, and I would enhance that. I would go to the library in the day when I would just go and spend a day there. Then have all this system stuff like you have now. I would go to the library to understand things. I don't want to sound like a fool when I talk. A fool thinks he or she is heard because they talk a lot. Anytime you find someone that talk a lot, you talk, well, you deal with a damn fool. You're dealing with a damn fool. You find somebody that's another talk. Just like Akshimri said, talk, talk, talk. You got smartphones, but the people are dumb as hell. That's a fact. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if I offend you. Damn your little emotions. I will. No one could open those seals. No one. No one. 
And the truth of the ruach of understanding, one must have the volume of Yahshua Hamashi in them to reveal unto us the depth and the volume of that. I want to begin here in the book of Daniel, Daniel, Daniel chapter 12. Hallelujah. I want to begin to filter and to identify all of the causes that cause us not to understand or discern the book. I want to begin here in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Yah tells us of a great time of, when Yah uses the word Sarah, Sarah, T-S-A-W-R-A-W, Sarah, he's talking about a time of great afflictions and agony and great pain. That's what he's talking about. And so he raised up this one in the house of oppression, Shibi, of captivity. A people captive under the throne of another nation and not enjoying the throne or the kingdom which Yah had promised unto Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. There were those that came out of Abraham, but they, are, they did not come out of Yitzchak. They did not come out of Yaakov. And they must come out of that lineage of the people. They must. He says here, Daniel, yeah, in chapter 12, verse 1, he talks about a time of the latter end that's Mikael, uh, Michael. He is the one who stands for Yah. That's what Mikael means, the one who stands for Yah. He says, the one that's Omad, the one that stands, he is firm. He is settled. Nothing removes him. After we've done all we can do to stand, we must stand in that testimony. No other testimony. Shaul said, after done all you can, he says, stand. Stand to see the Yashak, the Yahushua of Omariah. He is the one that shall stand up for the nation of Yisraeli. The Torah calls him the great Zah, the great prince, which stands for the children of your people. And he talks about a time of great sarah, of great adversity, great affliction, great anguish, a time of distress, time of tribulation, a time of proving, a time of trial. He says there shall be a time of great sarah, of great trouble. And he tells us, I want you to hear this, he says such as never, it has not been it shall not be even in the beginning of the antediluvian uh, when Yah destroyed the first world by water. He said, and never was since there was, listen, a nation. Never since there was a nation. And I, my people, my elect. This is directed to his people. This is what the messenger that stands for Yisraeli, as he talks unto Daniel, he tells him what shall be. And since Yisraeli was a nation, a people uh, that were brought into the full right of the book of the Berit of the Covenant, uh, he said the trials and the great afflictions that they have experienced, uh, there has never been one like this time uh, that shall come. Now he's speaking that to us to prepare us. Now in order for us to be prepared, we must have men of understanding. Only a man of understanding knows how to fight a war. Why is it, my young friend, that there are those that come to you tomorrow? They know more by next week than everyone that has labored for 15, 20 years. And yet there is no profession that you become skilled at it without great labor, without great trials. You don't become skilled at it. The arrogance of this wicked generation. You don't become a doctor overnight. You don't go read a few medical journals and become a doctor. And yet they read a few scriptures and say, no one will teach me. This is the damn stupidity of this juvenile nation. You can't become a carpenter overnight. Mr. Preston that taught me brick masonry, he says, 25 years later, I'm still learning. 30 plus years or more preaching I'm still learning and these boys today know everything and they challenge everyone and they are ignorant this is the only gathering of people the only people that knows everything even a child must be taught 
child must learn the ABCs. They don't even know the first oracles or, or the principles of Almighty Yah and Yahshua. But yet they know everything. Don't come to me that way. Don't allow your youthfulness to get your backside in trouble with me. You may take it to someone else, but don't come here with me. Because I will shut you down. He said, not since there were a nation, even to that same time. He said, and at that time, he's talking about a Pacific. He said, your people, your people shall be. Just like the young man that wrote me saying, well, the word Yosha or Yoshak is the only way you pronounce it. But here you pronounce this, his deliverance as Molats. To rescue, to deliver, to save. His Molats. And I said, I'm going to show you my mighty hand. I'm going to deliver, listen now, every, not some, every, whole, the whole, the full, every one that shall be found written in what? The book. The book. And there was a seal upon the book. The seven Rachim of Yah, it was sealed from the inside and the outside. And when your sure seals you, no weapon that formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rise up in judgment against you shall be condemned. Yeah. So when your seals a vessel is sealed, you understand? Yeah. The mind is sealed, the body is sealed, the heart is sealed, the wheel is sealed, the way is sealed. Yeah. This is more than a metaphoric of, uh, of an approach to the knowledge of your heart. He is just hidden from the stupid world that thinks it's wise. And reveals it unto simple ignorant men like me that is willing to dig under the rocks of my own corruption. And to expose everything about me. We don't like to expose us, do we? Oh, this strips and makes me naked. I like it. I like that. You understand? It doesn't take long if you're naked. You begin to stink after a while. Try it. You get naked. It won't take long. You began to funk it out. I say it that way. You began to stink. That's why when y'all saw Havan Adam, he said, put on some clothes. You all stink. He put them on clothing because they were stinking. That's what he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does it say everyone that shall be found written in the book, does it say that? And we don't understand or discern the book, yet we think we're wise, yet we don't understand the book. Hallelujah. Again in Revelation 5, 2, And I saw a strong Melah proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open, does it say the book there as well? Yes, it says the book or Sefer Ha? That's what it says, the book? Well, keep everything in line with the book, all right? It says, the book, who is able to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Who is able to open this book and to reveal unto us whose names are written in this book. Is one thing that is certain. When we have this mindset that is Risha, it is a mind that is wicked. It is a mind that filters everything. It says everything. It retains everything that is not about Torah. That man has no concept of what the book says. Because Yaqahan proves that here in Revelation, Kilyana, chapter 13, and verse 8. Daniel talks about those that are written in the book. We must have understanding of that. It says in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, he talks about all, not some. He's talking about all. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're not of the world's conversation. We don't act like it. We don't walk like them. We don't act like them. We don't conversate with them. We're not engrossed in conversation with the world. I make sure my conversation with the wicked is very limited. That's me. You can talk. How does one get all... Oh, jacked up, if I may use the term, uh, conversating with the wicked. Just talking with the wicked. I don't give a damn if it's your wicked mama, your wicked sister, your wicked daddy. It makes no difference. You get this spree 
And don't you know you can talk hours with the wicked and have no ability to talk 10 minutes with Israel? You are wicked. Don't worry. I got you covered. Don't worry. Let me read on. It says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship this Anta Hamashiach. That's what we, that's what we worship. We don't shecha. We don't, we, 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 we don't come before his presence with the gladness of heart. We worship the spirit that is anti. What do you mean, man? We retain these spirits that we know resents truth, resents Yisraya, resent one another, reject your ark, rebel against your hood. See, that's an anti Hamashiach. We must love our neighbor, our reach, as we love ourselves. And that is anti Yeshua Hamashiach. He says, um, uh, and they shall worship this anti, this, uh, this Nahash, uh, this demon power, this monstrous uh, uh, spirit. Uh, you know, in my days, uh, the parents would say, you are a monster. The mother would just tell you what you are. We got a monster spirit in us. We got this Leviathan, this beastly nature. We rise, we raise up like a beast. We raise up like a lion and, and, and our hair stands up and our necks explode. No, I'm going to tell us the truth about us. We get pissed off. We get angry ants and we let it be known. And yet we're too dumb to discern whether one is acting like a fool or jackass. I will tell you, act like a fool, man. Woman, shut your wicked mouth. I don't care who he or she is. I don't care if he's 109, I will tell him, you're wicked, man. You're going to die in your wickedness. What's in us, our conversation will be about that. If you are a wicked woman, I don't give a damn what you think you are and how pristine you think you are. A Sadiq man, he talks of the righteousness of the laws of Yah, of his Torah. Same thing with a woman. He says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship this Atta Hamashiach. And that's why we give credence and laws or obedience unto this anti-Yah spirit, whose names are not written in the book. Whose name are not written in the book. He shall deliver all those, as Daniel Yah says, whose names are written in the book. Whose name are written in the book. Have we not been invited to a wedding? So you better know that your name, you got to be able to open that book and see my name there. Come on, Yisrael, you got to be able to open the book. The invitation comes. It is the dam of your shoe that invites the house of Yisraya. You got to be able to open the book and say, I can see. Oh, that's my name. Whoa. You're not looking for no one else's name. You're looking for your name. We're talking about the book. Discerning Naka to recognize. When you recognize the wisdom of the book, you honor it. You rejoice and rejoice. And again, I said rejoice. He says, uh, whose name are written in the, in the book of life. The lamb slain. You tell me he was slain from the foundation. From the foundation of the old lamb. He was given as the offering from the foundation. I will get into the depths of that one word. All right. Okay. I will show you that. Hallelujah. Only those whose names are written. So you tell me the book is sealed for me that I can't see my name to make sure that the wisdom of this book, it is sealed? Sure sealed. From who? I will identify the people right here. Revelation 17, 8. These are the ones. It is our own risha, our own wickedness that impedes us. We want to blame someone else. It's your wickedness, old man. It is the wickedness of your countenance. It says here in Gileana, Revelation 17, 8, he says, and this Nahash, the beast, that you saw, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and he shall go into perdition. He's damned. I'm going to damn him. There are those that have been damned from the foundation of the earth. He shall go into the bottomless pit, the depths of Sheol, of the grave, into destruction, Sherlock. He says, and they that dwell on the earth shall wander. Who's going to wander? Well, I don't see why he's saying that. You know the ones that will wander? It says here, whose names were not written where? In the book. 
See, in the book of life, from the foundations, uh, from the foundation, from the foundation, does it say that? Yeah. Can I show you this word how, you know, I, I, I'm a listener. It's one thing that I said to my Isha the other day, I said, you know, I flunked the first grade. I, I said, that's how ruthless I flunked the first grade. I stayed back. In that segregated school, they didn't play. In those days, they did not play. I knew everything the other children knew. I couldn't understand. But I flunk the first grade. You got to be awful dumb to flunk the first grade. But back then, you flunked. They did not social promote you. And so, you that are familiar with the land that they call Israel, uh, the land is truly between the Great Niles and the Euphrates. That liberal land cannot support anything. That's what America and Britain, David Ben Gurren, 1948, stood up and says, uh, I declare that this is a nation of people. And you had these migrants, thieves, and liars that came from every part of the world, especially in the Baltic, places like Russia, places like Turkey, places like China, places of the northern, uh, northwest, or east hemisphere of Russia. They came from those countries, from Bulgaria, all those countries. You did not see a people that came with the hue of skin that was dark like your skin or my skin. Basically, you did not see that. It was only those people. And so the founding principle, or they have a force there, just like the CIA here in America, it is called Mossad. You ever heard that term? Mossad. Mossad. You never heard that. Well, Mossad. It is the equivalent of the CIA agent here in America in that land we call Israel. They are the foundation. They are the principle. They are the strength. They, they are the ones that stabilize. And they will go to the deepest part of hell to kill one that assaults that nation. They will go. They're called the Musat. Musat. M-O-S-A-W-N-D. Musat. You've never heard that? That's the secretive police of Israel. So these secrets that were from the foundation, he calls the foundations the Musat, that which is fixed, which is firm. His word is established. His word is forever established in the heavens above. It was established with him from day one. And his word is the Musat. That's why Yahshua was offered from the foundation. It is the word that offered the foundations of the earth. It is the word that Yah spoke and caused all things to be. It is the power of his Dabarim, his word, that caused things to be in existence, Yisrael. That is the foundation. It is Yahshua. Yahshua is the word that made flesh. He is the founding principles of the identity of Yah. You can't know Almighty Yahweh without Him. So He is the Musad. He is the Musad. He is the Musad. Just like the Musad of that land governs, and they will go and kill too. So does Yahshua. He is life. He is death. He makes life. And he kills. Hallelujah. And that's just a fact. He said they shall go into damnation. Who's going into damnation? They that dwell upon the earth shall wonder whose name. That's why people are wandering today. Their minds. Anytime your mind is wandering. Anytime your conversation is not in Torah. The minds wander to and fro. Because why? You have lost your anti Hamashiach. You have lost that spirit which, uh, which promotes lust and greed uh, and this uh, unsatisfying, insatiable desire and corruption. That's what a, a Moshiach or a Christ is. Uh, and that's what drives you. Everything but truth drives us. And it's wrong, Yisrael. Is that right? Is that right? Is that right? He said, those whose name are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, uh, when they behold the beast that was not and yet is. They don't understand the book, the wicked. And those that are full of Russia, wickedness. Those who talk wickedly. Any type of a mother, any time... There is a scene among us, all of their words, 
should be to those. I don't play with young men. Never have. My conversation is always serious. Do I laugh? There are times I laugh. I've, I'm not giving to a lot of laughter. Never have been. Even when I was growing up, I wasn't. I kind of looked at things a little more serious than most. Well, I would say all the young boys that I hung with. And there were not many that I hung with. And so I don't believe in the folly and those that will say and talk any kind of trivial folly. And we as a nation, we just stand and listen. There's something wrong with you to stand and listen. Because I don't even let people tell me jokes. I got a joke. I would say, no, you don't tell me a joke. Well, that's what, no, no, hold, hold up. And most of the time when men look at me, they tend to want to back away. You understand? They, they don't want to mess with me. I said, no, you tell me no joke. I said, it ain't no nasty joke. I said, look, you take the joke somewhere else. Don't play with me, all right? Man, you don't tell jokes. Not one joke. I don't tell jokes. I don't laugh at jokes. I don't want to hear jokes. And that's a fact. I don't laugh at your jokes. I've seen these clowns that call themselves comedian. And I said, why are the people laughing? It's stupid to me. Just, I mean, what's funny about that? I just look, I said, look at how stupid that man is. Look at how stupid the audience is. <laughs> you get that spirit. You hear the silly, crazy women. You hear them silly women. They're full of laughter. It's wrong. It's none of y'all. Your beauty is greater than that daughter's. Let no one kid you what he doesn't love women. You're crazy. I got a wife. Stupid. I hate to see what the world is doing to the women. I hate to see what especially the bath that is I on. The daughters make them look crazy as hell. And that's just a fact. And how they'll rape the minds of the men, making them even more effeminate and soft. And that's a fact. Effeminate boys. Hallelujah. The wicked shall not understand this book, Yisra'ah. They will not understand because there is a mind that is needed. And we must have the same mind that was in Yoshua. Let that same mind be in us. Quickly here in the book of uh, Felicia, Philippians chapter 4 verse 2. It is one thing that what a man knows. Now I want to show you. Now Shaul knew whose names were in the Lamb's book of life. Well, you can't say I'm going to heaven or hell. I know you're going to hell, you wicked thing. Who are those? You that testify of him? You that think you're right? Shaul says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 2. He says, oh, I intrigue Iuda. He said, I beseech unto you, Santashi. And they that be of the same mind, does he not say that? Philippians through 4 and 2. He talks about the same mind in the master Yeshua, Hamashiach. Does he say that? Yes. The same mind, you've got to have the same mind. You've got to have the same uh, discerning. Look what he says. He says, I intrigue you. I bless you also as true yoke fellows. He says, please help the women that labor, he talks about the words Yaga. Not that they were preaching, that they were suffering through the same humility and great trials and afflictions as I was. That's what that word labor means. Not that they were out, they, they met his need. They made sure there was a cool glass of water for the journey. They would go out of their way. Listen, daughters of Tizan, you know, I love you. We don't go out our way for no damn one. We go out our way for our own lust, our own greed. And our own side of we don't go out of way for no damn one. We don't take no excitement in nothing. I take great delight in whatever I do. In a way, I was kind of glad y'all was going because I got out in that garden boy. I knocked it out in six hours. That was the dirtiest I've ever been. I said, man, I'm filthy. I said, woman, I got to take a bath before I eat. I was filthy. But I had great rejoicing. Pulling up those T-posts, and that's a long walk. Those T-posts are not light. You drop seven or eight on your shoulder, you, you, you won't go far. My challenge was to make it all the way from one end to the other. I don't care how I was breathing. Why? Because I knew that that would alleviate the pain of my achim. That's why I did it. And I rejoiced. And one day I said, let me get out here. Oh, achim needs some wood. That's my boy. And so I get over there. You know how it is when 
the wind is blowing on that chainsaw. You all know what I'm saying. Sawdust everywhere, but every piece I cut, I sit here like that one. Mom, she worked like a champion. Come on. Oh, you're saying that to boss? No, I say that because uh, he is my fellow laborer. Yes. And she said, on take, make sure he gets that over to his house. Hallelujah. Cut him some wood. Yeah. It's cold out there, windy. We don't give a damn about each other. And that's just a fact. You'll lie against each other. We'll speak against each other. We will esteem the wicked over the righteous. You know, you are a wicked damn dog. I don't give a damn. I'll show you why we don't understand the book. Look what it says. Shaul said, bless those precious women that labor, those that yaga, those that are weary, those that faint in the midst of the great toils. Uh, They're so beautiful. They, he says, I want you. Uh, he said to help them. Whatever it takes, you help those precious daughters uh, that labor with me in the message. He says, with Clement... Also, and the other, my fellow laborers, uh, does he say whose names are in the Lamb's or in the book of life? Hell, he knew whose names were in the book of life. He said those. He said that group of wicked Jezebel, their names are not there, but that precious daughter. And Clement, he said their names are there. He said just help them because their names are in the book. He said help them because their names are... He said, because, uh, he said, whose names, that's plural, isn't it? Uh, whose names are in the book of life. Uh, he had discerned the book. He had revelation of the book. He knew whose name was in the book. Of, well, I'm praying for my sister. She get right. You're not right, Jezebel. Uh, and the hell you think you're going to pray for someone when you're wicked. You're not even right. Jackass of a boy, take your strong muscle. Damn it, you're not right, boy. He's not going nowhere. But yet, this man knew those whose names were on the book. He said, Their names are written. How top. He said, Look after them. Treat them nice. They may need some wood cut. Get them some wood. Make sure you, they got far. My brother, my Aka, his name is written. He got youngest that need to be warm. Get him some wood. Pick him up some pine coals. He doesn't need to come in and do that. Get some kindling over there for him. We don't frankly give a damn about what Torah said. Why? Because we're not of the same mind. Did not Shaul address in the first verse, or I read in verse 2, he said, they that are the same mind in the master Yahshua, you got a damn sensual, a wicked mind, a horse mind, a damn dog's mind, a greedy damn, a fat damn mind, a dog mind, a black mind, a white mind, and a damn corrupt mind. I don't take nothing back. Don't like me, boys. Don't like me. He said they were the same mind of Master Yeshua HaMashiach. The book is his mind. The book is his mind. Our minds are so damn corrupt. We're not going into the kingdom. We may think we are. Judgment began here first. Where shall the wicked and the unrighteous appear before Yah? We're not doing an excellent job. That's why our conversation must be with men of understanding and daughters of understanding. That understand Torah and fear Torah. What a man understand when he, when he does certain Torah, he fears. He knows the implication of Torah. Her ways are beautiful. Her walk is beautiful. Her attitude is right. Our attitude is piss poor, Yisraya. I'm talking to his nation. It's a funky damn attitude. Silly women everywhere. Immature men. I will come on. I don't like no silliness nowhere. You're not even with my wife. I don't like it. I don't like you laughing like that. Don't laugh. Well, I was like, no, no, I said you were laughing. That's enough. No question what I say. If I tell you something, it's because I'm going to make, enhance you and make you strong and better. You represent me. No damn nutty thing beside me. I'm crazy. You represent my strength. You're the beauty of my strength. I do too. And I keep it real and keep it straight in my crib, as they would say. No, I'm not going to play. I'm not playing for that. I'm not feeding your emotionalism. And when I say something, it's best, when I say something, it's best to listen to my words. 
There are great rewards when you listen. No, I don't have to sit in my house and just talk, talk, talk. I may say something five minutes and I sit. And I, I don't even say, okay, so no, I just stop talking and sit. But you ponder that. I hate it. I hate what the world has done to the daughters. We got so much of this damn rubbish in us and the men. So much filth. So much punkism. Don't you know, actually, they're saying that if you, if you, uh, if you embrace faggotism, uh, you're being progressive now. Gays, that's a progressive mind. Well, I don't want no damn progressive mind. I want the same mind that these had because it's going to take that mind for your name to be written. You can play all you want to. Uh, he's talking about the same book, the book that we are and should be able to discern. Uh, no two different books. It's only one book. Uh, and there are books in the book, but there is only one book. Uh, there is only one book of Berith, uh, book of the covenant. Uh, and it gives us everything we need in life. The, the, the law of wisdom, the law of understanding, the law of the fear of Yah. It gives us everything we need, Yisrael, Yah. We just need men to extrapolate uh, and for them to stop acting like, like little damn immature boys. Uh, as Yah said to Yahushua, get off your crying knees. Uh, stand up uh, and act black on this. Uh, stand up like a man. Uh, crying like a little effeminate. Uh, Get up, boy. There's a rebellious damn people. Get up and stand before me like an ish. One with strength and character. One that's bona fide. One that is brazen in the mind of Joshua. You got these weak boys. They don't know how to protect their damn thing. That's right. They rebel against you and the women are rebellious. They rebel against you and the women are rebellious. In the days in the secular since daddy comes in the house, the house, the whole house got quiet. Hell, everybody today is on a v, video game. This one on that, that one's on MySpace. This one on the iPhone, the smartphone, and they're dumb as they come. Let me move on because I want to finish here. We're going to get to the root of this, all right? If you have the book of Baruch, I want to show you something that is vitally important here. Baruch, Baruch, first Baruch, first Baruch, chapter one, chapter four, verse one. I want to read this quickly. I want to finish this today, all right? It says in the book of Baruch, Baruch gives us an essay of the beauty of the great rewards of, of the book. Our names are written in the book and has been sealed by the seven, the Ruachim of Yah, the spirit of the fear of Yah, the spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge. You tell me that this book that our names are sealed there. Look what Baruch says in Baruch chapter 4 verse, verse 1. Hallelujah. I want you to turn there. Baruch 1 and 4. Baruch. It says in the book of Baruch here. Hallelujah. He says it quickly, Yisrael. He says, for this, for this is. Everything I'm reading is the book of mitzvah. It is the book of the commandments. Am I not commanding us or instructing us in the ways of Yah? He said, for this is the book, the book of the commandments of Yah. Not only the commandments of Yah, he says, and of, and the Torah, he tells us that the Torah, he says, it yashab, it endures. It is strong, it is stable, it endures olam viet, it endures forever. There is no, the Torah is going to endure. That's why he placed it, he wrote it in our hearts, in our minds. It will never lose its fervent of power. Yahshua, that testimony is the living Torah. And he is saying that Yahshua endure forever. He said, and all that keep it shall come to life. You're not coming to life without Torah. You're not coming to life without the book. And you think we can so, so, so easily serenade or so immaturely say, well, I don't need to come to the knowledge of the book. We must come to the knowledge of the commands of the book. And we that keep it, we shall find life, Yisrael. We shall find the life of Almighty Yah in Yahshua HaMashiach. <clears throat> Hear this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He says, uh, and he's talking to Yaakov. He says, turn, turn, shoot. Verse 2. Turn you, O Yisrael, O Yaakov. He said, and take hold of the book. Take hold of the book of the commandments of Yah. He says, walk in the presence of the light thereof, that you may be illuminated. So if our conversation is with men of understanding and women, we're walking in the light of the very brightness of the testament of Yahshua. He said, we shall be illuminated. Our countenance should always be illuminated. 
We got death on our countenance. We look dead. We look sick. I don't play, but I don't look that way. This little light of man. I'm going to let this witness shine. Oh, the light of your shoe. We're going to get that house of yours ready this winter. Because you're going to get down here and sing, man. That man can sing, as Yosef says. He didn't laugh. <laughs> he can sing. He was just as sober. You, you know Yosef he, uh, he, he, he looks at me. He can sing. Everything's all right? No, no. He can sing. Well, no. <laughs> he can sing. <laughs> he didn't come that way. He said he can sing. We should be sober, vigilant. You should be clear. Let the enemy take your mind to the folly. Keep going. The book. Nacha, the sermon. Baruch also says, let me read that again. Turn, O Shub, Teshuva, turn, O Yaakov, and take hold of this book of the commandments and the Torah. And walk in the presence of the light. For his Torah is a light unto our pathway, is it not? It's a lamp unto our feet. The word lamp, near. It's near us. He says, therefore, that you may be illuminated. What is illumination? It is the ma'o. It's that you shine with great rejoicing. Your face rejoice in the midst of all of the, of the calamity and agony of Sarah. You still got light. He says, give not your honor to another. You don't give the honor of Yah to another. Yah does not give his honor to anyone. He saw other things that are profitable unto a strange nation. You don't take the fruit of Yah. You don't bestow the accolades upon a strange nation. A wicked man or wicked woman say they're kind. They're kinder than the people of Yah. You're a damn liar. You are a flutter damn liar. You don't give those accolades unto a wicked nation. Listen to this. Yisrael Yah. He says, happy, Esha, oh Shia, we're full of the riches, happy uh, are we? Happy are we. Or what? Things that are pleasing to Yah are made known unto us. What pleases Yah, he makes it known. This book is his pleasure, isn't it? He makes it Yah that makes us to know it. The things that are pleasing to Yah, he makes it known unto you. So he causes a man to labor. You may be asleep, but he's not asleep. You may have a little time to fret around, but he's not fretting. Happy is the man that delights in the things that are pleasing unto Yah. We're not happy because we don't delight in what is pleasing to Yah. He tells us to be of tough cheer, be of excellent rejoicing. He said, my people. He calls us my people. He call, tells us about the zikron or the memoria of Yisrael. That's what we are. We are the memoria. We are the zikron. We are the reminder of who. We remind Yah of who he is. He has not hidden this book from us. There's a reason why it's hidden. He says, Baruch 4, 6. This doesn't identify every nation. He said, you were sold to the nation. There's only one people that have been sold to the nations. I, I don't care what you say. There's only one people that have been sold or has been sold to the nations. Does it say that? You have been sold to the nations. Those over there in that land of Israel, they were not sold to the nations. They're from the Baltic. He said, you have been sold. It did not say just to the Americas. You have been sold to the nations. Does it say nations or a nation? He said, you have been sold to the nation. Listen now. He said, not for your destruction. He didn't sell us to destroy us. Why did he sell us? Because you move Yah to wrath. Because of our wickedness, our rebellion. Uh, yeah. Because of our sinful nature. We've been sold under sin. We've been sold under the great, uh, the great agony of sin. Uh, not for our destruction. Uh, because we have moved Yah to his zebra. He said, you were delivered uh, even into the hands of your enemy. Why? You provoked him. That you made sacrifices unto devils. Uh, yeah, that's sacrifices. That's Zakin Yeramiah. That you sacrifice unto the Shadim, uh, unto the God of your belly, unto the devious, wicked actions uh, of your mind. You said words to honor even the devious and the most wicked concepts uh, of your own heart. 
You had despair for the house of Yisra'ya. You esteemed the damn wicked. That's wrong, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. For you have provoked him that made that made you by sacrifices to devils. And you have not honored to Yah, Almighty Yah. We get told that we esteem Yisra'ya much higher. That's what the book commands. We esteem Yisra'ya. We will find ourselves esteemed. You esteem the damn wicked greater than the, the Sadiq. I, I, don't, don't worry about it. I got us all. That's why we don't understand the book. You think you understand. You think because you look and you talk and you, you heard that you understand. That doesn't mean you understand. And that's a fact. Yah says this in verse 8. He says, you have forgotten. You have azab. You have abandoned. You have forgotten the everlasting Omar Yah that brought you up. You have grieved Yerushalayim that nursed you, the city of Shalom. Whereby in the midst of all of your captivity and all of your anguish, you could go into Yerushalayim and your prayer was heard. We don't even want to go into Yerushalayim. As she nursed you, she put her breast, her shot, her titty in your mouth and gave you the delight of the sincere milk of the testimony of Yeshua. And here our bellies have been turned away from that. We don't want nothing sincere. For when she saw the wrath of Yah coming upon you, she listened. The city, with the salt of the earth, if the salt loses its flavor, its fragrance, it is tough enough to be thrown out and trodden on the foot. Are we not? Are we not a city that's set upon a hill? That our light cannot be hid? That's what Torah says. That's what the Torah says. Are we not Yerushalayim? That's not the Ruach of his Shalom goes from us. That's what his covenant is. That's what his Berith is. His Berith is the covenant of promise of Shalom. Yeah, we hate each other. We don't hate our sinful, wicked ways. David said, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate all them. We will hate Yisra, yeah, but we will not hate all them. All your accusations, all of your in your windows, uh, and those that don't that turn back on you, you don't even hate them. You don't despise their presence. You love their wicked fellowship. You love sitting down and eating with dogs. I don't want to eat with dogs. Not me. As a young man, yeah, just he had his hands on me. I know he did. I know he did. At fifteen, he had his hands on me. I was 15. I wasn't like boys that were 15. I didn't even dress like boys when I was 15. I dressed different. I looked different. I didn't act like them. It's amazing that if someone was three years older and you had a respect for them. There was these two football players for the Philadelphia Eagles. One was named Reggie White. He's dead. Yah began to reveal the man the true nature of his heritage. He had abandoned all Christendom. And the other one's name back in the days, his name was Jerome something. He died in Florida. They were the, they made up that fierce defensive line of Philly. Those two players. And Jerome met Reggie White when he was like 18. Reggie was like 21. And he had such a respect for that man. He was like a father to him. Although the age was three years different. People say, I'm your age. You can't tell me. How are you? Well, at least I'm 23. He has such regard for that man. He loved him like his own brother. He respected him. If Reggie said, you do that, he did it. He was only three years older. He was about 30 years older. You, you, don't, you have no regard for them. That's the truth. Only for your daddy, your mama. I know I'm talking this thing right. When Yerushalayim saw the wrath, I am the city. I am a city. I am the city. So I tell you to listen, O you that dwell in Sion. Yah has brought upon me great mourning. He has caused my heart to grieve. That's why I talk the way I talk. For I saw the captivity of my sons. He saw the slavery and the shabi of the sons and the daughters, which the everlasting Yah brought upon them. It is Yah that brought this upon this nation. The slavery, the, sub segreg the separation, the segregation from the land. Uh, he says, uh, with joy, with joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping uh, and mourning. Uh, see, the hour is coming where we won't have to weep no more. You understand? Yeah. 
Weeping may endure for the night, but the joy, the shimcha, the great rejoicing of Yah comes in the morning. Only when? I'll show you when it comes. Something must be opened. Hallelujah. It must be open. Hallelujah. It must be open, Yisra'ya. The book must be open. The book must be open. Hallelujah. Let me find this quickly. Ah, yes. Hallelujah. 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 The book must be open. In order for that to manifest itself, people of Yah. Hallelujah. Let me proceed. It says, I, I want to read also here uh, in the book of Shirak again. I want to express to you this book and its beauty and the contents of it. And we don't sell out for this book. Shirak 24-23. I want you to hear this quickly. Shirak says, all this is, everything that I write, everything that I say, it is the book of the Berit of the Covenant of the Most High. So everything that he is in covenant with us, it is in the book, Yisra'ya. Everything. He says, all this is the book of Berit of Covenant of the Most High. He says, the Torah which Moshe Seva commanded us as an inheritance for the congregation of Yaakov. That's why we have this book. It shows us our place, our inheritance, the riches that are ours. That's what it shows us, Yisrael. It is for the wisdom of the inheritance of the nation. He tells us, faint not and be strong in Yah. Don't faint because of the opposition. We faint at the smallest of things. We get angry about nothing. He said, faint not, faint not to be strong in Yah. He said that he, this is what Yah wants to do. He wants to establish or confirm you. Uh, cleave unto him for Yah Almighty is the mighty one of us alone. And beside him there is no other redeemer. He commands us to cleave. Cleave unto him to hold fast, uh, to stand. Uh, there is no other redeemer, Yisrael. Yeah? We must cleave unto the truth of Yah. He says here, it fills men, the book, the book. It fills us with wisdom. I want to show you the extent of the great wealth of how the wisdom fills us. It fills you, daughters of Tizayon. Uh, we're filled with every kind of damn corrupt thing. He says this book, he began with the book of the covenant in verse 23. He said, it fills you. It fills you. It fills you. It tome. It caused it to run over abundantly. It fills you with hukmah. How? He said, in order for you to understand the depths of this wisdom, uh, he said, like Paishan, uh, like the river Paishan or the great river Tigris. Uh, he said, at the time uh, of the first fruit. He said, the great Paishan uh, and the great river Tigris, it flows with such depth. Just like Davi said, blessed uh, is the man that, uh, he, he will be like a man planted by the rivers of waters. He said, that is the depth and the volume. That's the volume of the wisdom of Yah. You tell me you can drink the whole river uh, of Paisan uh, or the river of the Tigris. Uh, they haven't emptied it dry over a thousand or over six thousand years and it still runs. It, they're still both fertile rivers. And the waters flourish. And that's the depth of wisdom. But, but we want the damn folly and the foolishness, Yisra, yeah? He said, that's how it is and the fruit because uh, you're planted by the rivers of water. There's great fruit in your life. Uh, that's great love and meekness and kindness. Uh, this is a disturbed generation. We're cold, we're nasty, and we're wicked as hell. Uh. We don't have no consideration of each other. My way or the hell's way, damn you, it's wrong. We don't understand the book. Uh, and you think you got the life of your sure's testimony, you are fat, a damn liar. Yeah. I don't care who you are. We're cold and we're nasty. I'm not going to stop preaching like that because I know how we are. We're cold, we're nasty. We're cold and we're nasty. We're cold and we're nasty. You don't like me because I tell you the truth. You're going to die that way. I, I, I want someone like Shaul to let me know that, that, that he said them bathetes and their names are written. That's what he said. He said their names are written in the book. <laughs> Take care of them. Take care of them. 
because the book was open to him. He said, the names are there. I've seen their names. There. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be there, but I got it. Well, no one will know. No, no, no one will understand. The word yada, no. That doesn't mean that, doesn't mean that one doesn't know. We know of. How many of y'all know President Obama? You know of him, don't you? But you know, you, when, when we get our new names or our renewed names, it's going to be a name that associated with us. No one but us. And no one will know that but you. But it's not that no one's going to be pronounced that or enunciated. It's just wrong. These are the lies we've been taught by Benny Hinn and T.D. Jakes. You tell me revelation come to the loins of these wicked men and understanding a Torah come to them and people say the same thing. There are those that say they love Yah saying the same thing Benny Hinn is saying. Same thing T.D. Jakes is saying. They're saying the same thing. Buy food and stock up, you damn wicked liars. You buy the truth and stock up. Don't sell it. Wisdom and understanding. He said it shall be like the rivers of the Tigris and the first fruit. Look what it does in verse 26. Or should write 24, 26. It says it makes them full of what understanding, doesn't it? It makes them full of understanding. That's what the wisdom does. It makes you full of understanding. What am I as why is he's full of understanding? When a man has the hukma, the ability to fight skillfully, uh, he's full of understanding. It says it makes him full of understanding. Uh, how? Like the great river Euphrates uh, and like the Jordan at harvest time. Uh, there is so much of your wisdom and understanding uh, that everyone can eat from you. Uh, that even the birds come to your, your tree and they lodge themselves there because the fruit is so abundant. Uh, even the strange minds of the nation will come and inquire of you. Uh, we need men to break it down for us. It makes them full of understanding. And if we're full of dung and full of lies, we're not full of understanding. And that's just a fact. Make them full of understanding. Why are you talking to me? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Look what it says. It makes Musa or counsel, chastisement, correction. It makes instruction of the doctrine of the knowledge to shine forth like light. So when one is instructed in the discipline of Torah and the wisdom of understanding, you see a light in them, like the light of what Gion in the time of vintage. This is what he says. It's sad, you know. When I read this, when I understand what it says, he says, just as the first man did not know her perfectly, he knew her. But she did not make him complete. Why? He didn't shine. He said, just like the first man did not know her perfectly, the last one, are we the last at whom? He said, the last one have not phantom her. Do you understand what the word phantom means? It means the last man. We don't appreciate a damn thing. We don't comprehend. See, I'm not smart like you. I have to look where it's at. See, we're the last man, are we not? We don't even phantom her, the great plethora of the wisdom of understanding of Yah. We don't even phantom her. We don't even relate to her. Quiet, huh? That's all right. Hallelujah. This is what I miss right here. Go back to Felicia, I mean, Felicia. Philippians. Philippians 4.3. I forgot to do this what I wanted. Shaul said, I entreat you also. He calls those achim, true yoke fellows, help those women which labor with me in the message, or the bizurach, with Clement. Also with others, other of my fellow laborers. See? He knew them and his other fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life, whose name are written. He says, because you know your name is written, he says, I tell you what, uh, he says, rejoice in Yah. Yeah. Sometimes or always. always. Well, you don't know what I'm going through. You wicked man, shut up. You wicked woman, silly old woman, stupid man. This is what he says. He said, rejoice in Yah, always. And again, I say, all you need to do is just rejoice. For your name is written in the book. You don't know because you're so wicked, you don't realize your name is there. 
That's why there is no rejoicing. That's why there is no rejoicing. No whatsoever. He said again, rejoice. He did not say rejoice sometimes. He used the word always, Olamviat, eternal, always rejoice. And again, when, there, when, when, you, when, when there's nothing things to do, just rejoice. Why? Because you know that there are fellow laborers and names are written in the book. In the book. And yet Shaul seen the book and he knew what was in the book. And he revealed whose names were in the book. He knew that their names were in the book. He said, man, I want you that are laboring for them and assisting them and helping them to rejoice. So when you do something for Ach and Ahot, you ought to rejoice in that. You ought to rejoice and be glad that you are able to go and get the Akim some wood for their homes uh, and just do it. Well, uh, they, they, no! Do a little something for them or the Aholta uh, or the Ema that needs a little help. Yes. We don't give a damn. We, that's the mindset of this nation. We don't care for Yah, we can't care for no one. And because we don't care for each other, we don't care for him. That's a fact. We must come to the reality of that and get over above this wicked flag. I don't care what the situation is. You always will rejoice when you do something uh, for someone. Uh, are you boasting? No, I, I rejoice that I can, can cut wood for my aqua because uh, that man goes out early in the morning. Uh, he gives everything to you. He's lost everything. Uh, and he gets off his lazy ass for us. Uh, and we're lazy as hell. I grow a garden just for him. Yeah, well, in the Achim that work, sure will. Make sure you get that for them, Oxymion. Make sure, make sure they got what? Okay. Already got them. Okay. I don't mean to burden you down, but make sure. Hallelujah. Yeah. I hate this falseness of the people of Yah. He tells us to rejoice in this book because you have knowledge of it. You have discerned the book. Because you have the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. The last man can't even phantom. He can't even appreciate what Yah has said in this book. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. That's why we need to have our conversation with men of understanding. I want to press on that a little more because in order for you to understand why we don't understand, you've got to understand what we must understand. And what a man has understanding, he, he is like... It illuminates out of him. He looks strong. I don't care how, how old he is. He still looks strong. He has a virile nature. I don't care how old the woman is. You see this old woman. She'll get back to hell. Your young ones can't even move. And she will. It's self-righteous. But hell, let it be. Let, 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 let there be an activity. Something silly. Oh, go home. I know what I'm saying. You don't tell me. I've been around. I wasn't born yesterday. And yet, names written, we have no understanding of the book. But yet, over the, some of the silliest, damnable things, we get excited. Something is twisting in our damn minds. The prophets, the Nobi Hanak, as there were those granted to watch over, just like Micaiah, Elias. He is the great prince that watched for, for Yisra'ya, doesn't he? And there were those that, as Torah says, we're going to judge not only man, but we're going to judge the Melechim as well. He gives us a prime example here with Hanak, right here in Hanak 14.1. We're still talking about the book and it being discerned. Hanak 14.1. Hanak 14.1. It says, this is the book. That's what it says, the Shefa, the Ha, the book of the words of Sadiq. This is the book of the word. It's not this book. It's not, you're sure, the, the book, the volume of the righteousness of Yah. And that's what this book is about. It is about the volume of the righteousness of Yah. He says, and not only that, but the chastisement. Of those that Yah had commanded the eternal watchers, uh, in accordance with how Yah the Kadosh one uh, had commanded uh, in the vision, he gave command. Yah says the Melak of Yah encamps. So when one encamps, that means that one stays there. He doesn't encamp around everyone, he encamps about those that 
That fears you. You are rich. If you don't fear you, there's no milak around you. When you don't fear you, you can't say any wicked thing. You don't give a damn. You say whatever comes out of your loose mouth. And you don't care who you corrupt. A liar and a corrupter hate everyone that is affected by them. I don't care who it is. I don't care who it is. You hate them. You hate them. Yes, my mother was corrupt, but she didn't corrupt me. I would just say to her, you didn't raise your daughter to be a woman, or woman. I hate you did her like that. You couldn't teach me how to be a man. You taught your daughter how to be nothing. That's a fact. She didn't teach you how to be a woman. She didn't teach you the beauty of a mother. She didn't teach her the sincerity of a wife. She didn't teach her a damn thing. And then when my mother would be abusive to my sister, I said, you didn't teach him. I said, you're faulting her. You didn't teach this woman nothing. You should have taught her how to be a woman. You didn't teach her and you're wrong. There are women don't even teach their daughters the, the application of their body when there is a tremendous matter, uh, change in them. But that's so stupid. That is so damn stupid. You teach them in the cleanliness of their body. How to keep a house clean. Damn lazy women that they don't even teach their daughters how to keep a house clean. You teach them how to keep a house clean. We were in a shack, but it was always clean. We lived in a shack, but it was clean. We lived in a shack, but it was clean. We lived in a shack, but it was clean. Outside and inside. Outside and inside. Red clay in the front yard. We get the broom straw and sweep up everything. There was no paper to sweep up. We swept it up. We swept it up. We swept it up. It was clean. Shut. See through the walls. Know what I'm saying. We kept it clean. The house was clean. House smelled nice. Open up the windows and granted put some of them pine needles. They didn't have all this polluted freshener you get. Cause all kinds of allergy with your children. Just, Baby, get some pine cones. Pine needles and boil that. House smelling nice. You pissed in bed. She took the mattress out. You, you got your buttocks tore up. What? Well, first of all, you didn't piss too many times. You didn't piss too many times. We didn't have no mattress like what I have. Three, four, five hundred dollars for mattress. We had an old mattress that was made. And she wasn't about you pissing in that. And it's stinking. Not stinking. Take that thing out and hang it on the line and air it out all day. If you took the next day, you just, you just had the heart of it. In this cold weather, they didn't dry out that quick either. You got four or five in the bed, you could not be just doing anything. So that we, we learned very early. Very early. Very, very early. I remember the last time I weed in bed. I probably was around four, four and a half, five. I, I, I wasn't even in school. And it was a cold night too. We had a little small fireplace in that place. And uh, when you would do that, Granny would make you eat some hot peppers. But that night, that morning, that old woman was cold. She came in there with that rod, and when she began, and you wet down there, she began to lay that rod on you with that wetness. You move, baby. And you thought about that before, uh, 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 uh. And we didn't have no bathroom. We had to go outside and piss. We had to walk. That's right. We didn't have no bathroom. We had to go outside and piss. I was telling all these kids, I pull all my teeth. Every last one of my teeth, I pull them. I pull every tooth that I had to pull. The little thing got loose. Because uh, uh, I didn't like to wear saw some of the kids there. I didn't want my mouth to look like that. I pull all of my teeth. I pull all of them. Every tooth in my mouth that was poor, these, I pull them all. I was always cognizant of stuff like that. I pull all of mine. All of them. Then I thought, I'm granny, I'm up, I pull them. Put me a streak on that thing. Bam, come out. Woo. Of course, mom, I was looking for the tooth fairy to bring me a nickel or a dime. I never did get a dime. Didn't get a nickel. Never did find a dime under my pillow. Not one. Keep that old dirty thing. Well, okay, well. And we don't think that these things are valuable and important. You don't realize how you stunt even your babies by your stupidity. Oh, she, she won't let me pull a, a chap like that? 
I will. Chap like that? No. This is a silly generation. It is silly. I don't care if you don't like it. I don't care if you get upset. The things that children will be marked for the whole life because of your slothfulness. Talk to you too, Daddy. Well, let it go this time. No! Get it done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where did I stop here? In verse, verse 2. I want to move quickly. He said, And I saw in my sleep what I now speak with my lotion, on my tongue of the flesh. He said, I saw this now. And the breath of the mouth, Hanak 2 1, 14 2. He said, and he said, with the breath of the mouth which Yahweh, the great one, has given to man, so that he, man, may speak with it. That's why he gave us a mouth to speak with it. For what purpose? And so that he may have understanding with his heart. We, may, we speak with this thing because we have understanding. We don't speak because we don't have understanding. Men speak with no understanding of what they're speaking. He gave us this to speak with it because we have understanding and you should be quiet. We should be quick to hear and slow to speak. You should be quiet. Shut your damn mouth. And when you speak, it should be with understanding. You not, should not speak with ignorance. He said with understanding. Uh, understanding with the love as Yahweh, the great one, uh, has created and given to man. He has created that. He has created an understanding heart. Give me an understanding heart. Yeah, I want to understand your Torah. Accordingly, yeah. Has created me and given me. That's why he created those that watch for Yisrael. Men think that they're great, but he has created me. He has bara. He has given. He has not found me the word. The word of understanding. Why? So that I may reprimand the watchers and the children of heaven. So that I may show them we are the children of the kingdom. We must be reprimanded. That's why he gives. He gives unto a man an understanding heart. Sad to say we don't have that. He said, I wrote down your prayers. So it appeared in vision. For your prayers will not. Where your prayers will not be heard throughout all the days of eternity. And judgment shall pass you. Those that have fallen. Those melachim that fell. Against Yah, they can cry all they want to. When my sister got right. Your sister died of Jezebel that she was. Mama's 99 and she just gave her heart to Yahshua. Your mama ain't give a damn thing to Yahshua. No man can even come unto the Abba unless Yahshua this testimony draws him. Your mama performed something that made your heart feel nice. And you're so silly, you buy it. Your mama has not come to your shoe. Your mama is full of her wickedness and her sin. She doesn't give a damn about you. She will corrupt you. Convince you. And let her get you where she is in the state of her, her corruption. You'll find out. For now on, you will not be able to ascend. That's why we can't ascend into the heavens. Our minds cannot. Uh, we should set our affection on the things that what? That are heavenly. Should, should, should we not do that? Should we not set our mind on the things that are above? Uh, now, I don't want you to answer, but ask yourself that question. Is my mind on the things that are above? Uh, do I think on the heavenly things? Uh, our minds on every kind of damn earthly thing, every kind of wicked thing. Uh, he's talking to the watchers of the house of Yisrael. He said, that's why your mind doesn't even go into the heavens. Uh, you don't see the beauty of the Hashemayim of Yah. You don't even look up. You're so cast down. Uh, you don't even look up to see the brightness of the beauty of Yah. That's why you talk of the sensual, earthly, wicked things. You don't understand the book. Your mind is always sensual and always on the natural things. You can pretend all you want to. You're going to wake up as a son of perdition in hell. You're going to wake up. He says, uh, you will not be able to ascend into the heavens of your eternity. And you shall remain in the earth uh, in prison all the days uh, throughout eternity. Because you will not, you will not worship Yah as He commands. Before that, 
you will have seen the destruction of your beloved sons. You're going to see the death of them. He's talking to the watchers. Watchers now. And you will not have their treasures. They have no treasures to leave you. Oh, my son made me proud. He did. That's why he fell. That's why you're falling. Pride goes before fall, any kind of pride. Evangelist Hartsfield, one thing he taught, taught me, he said, son, I'll be proud of nothing. No children, nothing. He said, any pride is sin. I've never forgotten that. Oh, I, I don't care what nobody says. I'm proud of my daughter. Damn your wicked daughter. I'm proud of my son. He, he makes me so proud. That is so wicked. You have never heard me say that. You have never heard me say that. You have never heard me say that. Pride go before fall and haughtiness before destruction. Proud of what? I'm proud of my little, I'm proud of my baby girl. She's no different than the other baby girl. She's hard-headed. You are the spank that arse. Quit, get real. He said, you will not have the treasures which shall fall before your eyes by the sword. Then he says in verse 7, and your petition on their behalf will not be heard. Well, I'm praying for my chillings. Yes, it's not going to be heard. You sons of the kingdom, it's not going to be heard. Hallelujah. He said, neither will those of your own behalf, which you offer weeping and prayer. Those that you pray for and you weep for. Oh, I pray for him. I pray for my mom. I pray for my daddy. I pray for my sons. And you will not speak even a word contained in the book which I wrote. See, you won't speak the words in the book that deals with their corruption and their sins. You won't speak that. Hallelujah. You won't speak that. Turn quickly uh, back to the book of Daniel. Why is this shut up from us? Well, we don't understand the book. Hallelujah. You could also discount that I read here in Hanak. You also can find that in Judah, Yehuda, chapter 1. I have one, one book there, one verse, one chapter. Yehuda, read the whole chapter, read the whole book of Judah. But this is, as I began here reading out of the book of Daniel, Yah, and Daniel 12, 1, verse 4, I want to drop down. Yah says unto Daniel, Yah, now hear this, now he, he gives us a preciseness of the order that should be. I want you all to hear this if you hear nothing as I've heard today. I've spoke today, I want you to hear this. He talks of this time, he says in Daniel, Yah, chapter 12, verse 2. He said, but you, O Daniel, Yah, shut up. He said, I want you to shut down, to seal, to shut up the word and the seal of the book. Is he still talking about the book? He's talking about the book, isn't he? Isn't this the book that was in the right hand of Yahshua HaMashiach? He said, I want you to seal up the book, even to the time of the end. Are we in the end? Are we in the Akarith? Are we in the end? Are we in the end? That where are the men of understanding? Where are the strong young men that have overcome Hashatan? And they know the way of Yahweh. Where are they, Israel? He said, I want you to shut down. I want you to seal up the book uh, to the time of the end. Now, why? He said, you know you're in the end time. Because this shall be, uh, he said, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge, a uh, hot time, uh, knowledge shall be increased. It shall rub out. He said, you know you're in the end, but knowledge shall increase. But because one has knowledge, it doesn't mean a damn thing. Shaul speaks in the same prophetic voice as he writes under Timothy. Hold that. Go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. He talks about what danger shall arise in the midst of the nation of Yah. And the enemies of Torah. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. He talks about a sort. He said, these are the sort which they creep into houses. And they lead silly or captive. Silly. These are women that are put out. They're open. They're open to anything. You ever heard a woman say, I'm open for game. I'm game. I'm open. In my days, they would say that I'm open. I'm open to anything. I've heard that. You've never heard that? Come on, Yisrael. You're, you're not that lame. I'm open to it. Say what, old woman? Oh, my. I want to be my mama. She says, yes, sir, I've heard that. So uh, I'm open, baby. 
I'm open. He talks about silly women. He talks about a. It talks about a the, the silly women. He talks about an assembly. He talks about these little groups of gathering. They're silly. They're open. They're open to everything. They're not open to the truth, but they're open to everything. They're so easily persuaded. They're deceived by lies and every kind of corruption. He said, "The women they're laying down with lust. They are they are bearers of lust. They're so lustful, and women that are laden with sin." He said, "They're led away with so many kinds of lusts. How many lusts or different lusts leads us away from Torah, or studying, or teaching our sons and our daughters?" The mama teach the son, the baby boy, the beauty of love and of submissiveness unto a man. And when he sees that, he'll know how to treat a woman. It becomes innate with them. A mother teach the daughter the beauty, the beauty of love and honoring her head. She won't grow up talking back to a man. She won't grow up talking back to a man. She won't grow up talking back to a man. I will, man, this is a wicked generation. She will not grow up talking back to her husband. She will not grow up talking back to her husband. Because she will have a husband. When a man finds a wife, uh, when a man finds a wife, he's found a tough thing. And that is only great about the faith of Yah. Hey, we've all gotten married. It doesn't mean we got wives. Or you got a husband. Period. Look what he says here. He says, did not Daniel ask, says that knowledge, they shall run to and for knowledge shall increase. Did he not say that? We've got to have men wise enough to lay out this Torah. Shaul says in the seventh chapter, the same verse, he said, they're ever learning. They're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of Torah, of the book of the truth. See, we're always learning. See, knowledge is running to and fro, isn't it? 12, 13 years ago, you searched the internet for the name Yah. You may have found, I know, nothing there. A few thousand Documents. Some, you want to y'all search that in some and the derivative. Yah, Yahweh, Yahshua. Just search that and see how many. Can you search that one of you, Achim, right quick? See how many. Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, all that. You, you probably got a hundred million. Is that not confusing? Back in those days, you, if you found 10,000 or 5,000 documents, and a lot of that was repetitive because they had words, it was repeated stuff. So you probably had about six, 7,000 documents. And now, Every Joe Knocker prophet there is on YouTube. I look at some of these little boys. I say, what a shame. This is sad. I, I mean, you don't, you could, I, I mean, if you play basketball like you talk and the way you present something, you'll be in sad shape. I whip you at my age in basketball, man. How, just how many ways, how many documents on there with the word Yahweh? Oh, yeah. Talk so I can hear you. Say what? That's just Yahweh. You couldn't read that in your lifetime. You started today, you couldn't read all those documents. <laughs> is that confusing? Sure it is. I don't search the internet for stuff like that. I'm just being honest. I just don't. He said, they're forever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge. And knowledge shall increase. It has. But it's not the da'at of Yah. It's not the knowledge of Yah. When one comes to the knowledge of Yah, he comes to the power of the book. The book or the volume of the book is written of Yahshua, isn't it? Is he the word made flesh? Is he not the truth of Yah? I am the way, the truth. Is he not the imat of Yah? We must come to the fullness of the knowledge of Torah. The book must be open. We're in the latter days, and that's what Daniel says, uh, but you, sh he said, I want you to shut up the world and seal the book, where? Even to the time of the end. He says, seal the book until the time of the end. Now, these individuals say we're in the time of the end, but yet the seal of the book, they don't know what the book says. They don't know what the book says. Until the sign of the end. You seal the book until that time, until the sign of the end. And Shaul says this will be a generation of always learning. They always got something just like the young man wrote me uh, about the word. He said he has searched every Hebraic dictionary. I knew that he was full of himself. I knew he thought he knew more than everyone else. And so he was presenting something to me that challenged me. He say what he wants to. Uh, but I knew that what he was doing. I knew he was ignorant. I knew that. I'm not some little drop shot fly by. Uh. 
I'm not one that reads something and try to impress everybody I read this last night and read something every night and come back and say, look what I read, Zakin, look what I read, Mahalia, look what I read, look what I read, Yekara. No, no, I don't do that. Never have. Never have. Never have. Never have. You've known me ever since your issue has been coming in over 20 some years. That's what it's been. Tell me one time have I come to you and tried to show you something. Not even since you've been here I haven't one time. Have I? Not one time. Have not opened the book one time. Have not. It's the volume of what's in me speaks. It's what comes out of my fifth that speaks. It's my life that speaks. Let your conversation be with men of understanding be now. That can discern. And let the conversation be about Torah. Even if we're talking about fishing, it's Torah. Because, ma, look at that. That's all right. Give me one of them hooks, man. Give me one of them worms so I can fish with it. Everything is about Torah. This man can never say one time. I try to convince him or condemn him. Not one time. I wanted him when he saw me. Uh, he saw a man, someone that, ah, uh, he doesn't like like them preachers down there. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. I wasn't trying to convince him with my mouth. My life convinced him. I want him to see that. I spoke well of him all the time. I wasn't going to try to convince him or try to teach him. There were those that thought they could. Can't go around. I'm going to close in a moment. Hallelujah. Back to Daniel, yeah, chapter 12. I'm skipping some verses, but you understand. Chapter 12, verse 10, why we don't understand. Why we don't understand this kingdom power and the knowledge of Torah. Why we can't discern from the book. Daniel 12, 10. He uses the words many, many, meran, shall be purified, they shall be made clean. And they shall be made loban, white, loban. What, not what we think is white, but loban. And he uses the word Daniel 12, 10, they shall be saraf, they shall be refined through the process of great afflictions and trial. But he says this, he said, those that are wicked, I want to show you the traits of the wicked. The wicked shall do wickedly. Those that are criminals, they're going to practice criminal activities. And I want to point out two of the definitives, or three of them are the Criminal activities of the wicked. He said, the wicked shall do wickedly, wicked. And he said, and none, lo, lo, no way, no way, Jose. And none of the wicked shall understand. They shall not have the power to discern. You find a man or woman that's wicked, they don't discern even their words and the, the implications of their words and their attitude. Uh, he says, he said, but the wise, but the wise, he said, but the wise understand. You see that word, they perceive, they discern. Uh, not only do they understand, but they understand. The wise understand what? The wise understand what? Both what? Time and also the mishpatim. The yom, the day. And they understand the judgment of God. That's what the wise do. How does one become wise? By hearing the hearts of those of understanding. What understanding? The understanding of the book. What is, what is some of the pronounced traits of those that are wicked? Well, let me show you this. It says in Mishli proverb. This is why we don't understand. Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs 28 verse 4. Yah says, they that azab, that forsake, those that would abandon what Torah commands, to love your neighbor, to be kindly affectionate unto each other. He said, those that forsake, those that abandon, neglect the Torah, they praise the wicked. When you find someone that has neglected the Torah, I've heard people say to me, well, I know he's a wicked man, but he was nicer to me than you are. You wicked child of hell. You've just forsaken the Torah because I correct you in your wickedness. Those that forsake Torah. Anytime you find someone that prays the wicked, they have no light of Torah in there. They are wicked as hell. 
Someone say, well, uh, the wicked people are nicer to me than you call yourself Israel. Yeah, you are a wicked man. Uh, you are a Jezebel woman. You are a wicked woman. Uh, you don't understand even judgment. Uh, the wicked doesn't give a damn about you. The wicked doesn't care about you. Uh, it's your damn fault in your stupidity. Yeah. When a man, when a woman forsake Torah, they will always lift up the wicked. Why? Because they're lick of lifting up their own damn corruption uh, and their own damn wickedness. That's what they're doing. Uh. They're lifting up their own damn wickedness and their own unrighteousness uh, because they know they have sinned against you. They don't know what the book says. Or they can say what they want to about my son. He's sweet. He's a wicked boy. And yet you call me wicked? You say I'm unrighteous? You say the daughter to Zion, she's not kind. And you say this Jezebel of a sister, she's nice to you. She will sell you out. I'm breaking this down. That's what we don't understand the book. Uh, there is no injustice in you. Uh, and any time you think like that, you're thinking from a mind that is hell, it is evil. Well, you can't say, my son, you don't know if he's a serving you. Uh, his name is not in the book. He's a wicked boy. He's a faggot that doesn't even remember the Shabbat. Your daughter is a damn Jezebel. She's a liar. She doesn't give a damn about you. Uh. You can try to dress it up any way you want to. Uh. That's why we about to save ourselves from this untoward, this damn wicked generation. Pray, pray that your flight be not in the winter time, Israel. Don't worry about praying for that Jezebel. Uh. I will, man. I got energy like I was cutting that wood that day. Bro. I worked that, so I need, my, I need my saw blade, man. My chain. I need some of that aggressive. I don't like that stuff that I got. Look at him. That ain't worth a dime. I like that stuff to just, I like the way it cuts. Makes you dance back there. The other one, you get mad. They're like, come on now, Zuck. Ain't not at all. Get me. Get me my. Get me my chain, man. See, my, that's about like the one you got. I'm, I'm having the. I like that aggressive. She just go, mm, 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 mm. You like that? Yes, ma'am. You sweet thing. Shake, shake that blade. Yeah, woo! It cuts it like you're cutting butter. Blades we got, man. That one, that's all I got, man. That ain't, that ain't no blade. I don't like that, man. Uh, 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 uh. That aggressive even when it's dull, it cuts better than the sharpest of. And I'm thinking cutting that wood like, man, come on, this it's cold out here. You got snow on this wood. I'm cutting this. Sure sign of the wicked. The wicked shall not understand. That's why we don't understand. We praise the damn wicked. I read it again. They that forsake Azab, leave behind, abandon the Torah. They praise the rich of the wicked. Those that are criminals. They praise them. Oh, she is sweet. She's not sweet. He is not. He's not nice. They praise the wicked. And such as keep the Torah. Those that keep the Torah, they contend with them. They say, you're a wicked woman. Man, you're wicked. Don't look at me. Don't smile at me. I tell my Yeshua, hey, with that folk, don't look at me. I said, well, don't look at me. Why don't you looking at me? Folks, I don't want to look at me. That's just the truth. And we that are Sadiq or righteous, we contend with them, say, no, you're a liar. That's not the truth. That's not what Torah says. Well, I know that he is coming out. That's, you don't know what, not, not what you're saying. Show me in the book right here where, where you get that from. As such as that honor the Torah, as that such as keep the Torah, contend with them. We don't contend with them, we just go, <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. They'll say, man, yes, I was contending with them. I said, no, nah, you, don't, you don't know me. Huh? You don't know? I said, no, you don't know. You're speculative, you're very presumptuous, and it's wrong. And you cannot outwork me. I'll kill you in the field. You can send the field long as me. And then I go to the gym and bust down. Well, then the other day, and I saw what was on that bus. I said, who in the world? I knew who it was. I said, who in the world? Ouch. I'm still talking, though, man. I still got a little time. That's fact. You know, the daughter, sometimes we think that beauty is some kind of some kind of physical presentation, but it's not beauty. It is something that is in the heart that lights a man's eyes when he sees you. 
you get that beautiful, the, the outside will get beautiful. There's nothing more stronger than a man that Yah entrusted his creation in his hand. It is just that the wicked world has taught the women to dishonor them. The women of you here at the diaspora, you are the most vilified women on the face of the earth. And hell, everything you do when you walk, people should look at you and say, look at that. I command the attention of the wicked. You all understand me? Because when I go, they look and they watch. That's just a fact. No, I'm telling you the truth. It's a fact. And they don't care if my woman is beside me all on my arm. It's a fact. Don't look at me, thing. And I give, as they would say, I give no play, none whatsoever. I know who I am. And I stand in the assurance of that. I'm bona fide. I want you wicked one to know that. I've never in all my life saw a woman that I would say that if I wasn't married. No, I bless you for my, my wife. I said to her last night, I would die for you. Someone would come in this house. They're going to kill me first. I'm just flat out telling you. And then I know you're going to die because I know you. They're going to have to kill me. I mean that. I'm dying right now. You're going to go through me. And so you think I would flirt with some silly old juvenile woman? If I wasn't married to her, I, well, if I wasn't married to her, I, I wouldn't. Me at this age, I, I'm not looking. I'm just telling you. Because I give all my time to Yah to be a strong soldier. That's what I would do. Now find what I say. And if I jab you in your eyes, I mean to. Because it's silly. Some wicked woman or some wicked man is wrong. I will never dishonor my wife like that. I have never lied to her. I've never gone against the grain of our marriage. Never. And believe me, if I had wanted women, I'm not boasting you through. Y'all understand? I could have what the world called fine women. Not no welfare hopping broad with five or six youngers. I mean women with degrees and women with Mercedes Benz. And that's right. Not everything that everyone was laying with. And I'm just flat out honest. Men with, women with Benz and had fine apartments too. And dress fly. Never for one thought, never one iota, never one chance. I tell the story. I'm going to finish. I was in Colorado. These two Caucasian women, where I was in Boulder, this is where they came from all over the United States and the world to train for the Olympia. That's where they came. I know what I'm saying. And I was in that hotel, what, 13, 1,400 miles from home. Nobody would have ever known what I had done. It was dark that night. I went up to get some of the women said, who are you? I'm like, Heifer, who are you? And her friend gets up and what the world said, boy, she sure was fine too. Said, where are you going? Come back. We will be here. What time will you get back? Hell, well, I ran. I ran to the hotel room. Didn't have no cell phone back then. And I called my issue and said, you can't believe what happened. See, there have been men that wait there and go back up there. And there they were. And they both were ready. You understand? I've never thought like that. Never. I've never, never, never wanted to go outside that. Never, never desired it. Never considered it. Never! And I'm not talking about no ugly women either. And that's just a fact. It's nothing more beautiful than a husband and a wife. And if a woman ever learns how to be a woman, listen to me. It's by her beauty that her children are saved or by his strength. Either one of them, what Shaul said, Corinthia. And if a woman ever understand the magnificence of the Tifra, the beauty of Yah, she will make a man beautiful. She is the essence. She is the essence of beauty. That's what beauty is. Man doesn't understand beauty, but Yah incorporate that in the woman's bosom. From the, her titties to feed her babies, uh, to her to bring forth the excellence of his life. That's nothing. You don't discount the daughters of Tizah. I don't like them being Jezebels uh, and whores. Uh, And act like a piece of a slut. I don't like that. Shaking your ass for every man to see. It's wrong to do that, daughter. Just as wrong for me to get naked and go out and say, look at my muscles. Look at my... I would not do... I would not even do my wife like that. I won't do it. When I first heard of those things, I stopped. 
I remember I went down to visit her. Just bear with me. Her cousin, he was a lieutenant in the Navy. And that's when we had just started the assembly there in, 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 Char in South Carolina, here in South Carolina, with Evangel Hartfield. So I go down to visit her cousin Ronnie, and uh, we stayed there for him two days, and then we came back up to, no, not Orlando, but, but the next town, the one right down here where Zakin Yakov lived. What's that? Jacksonville. We went out to the beach. No, that's right. We went to Daytona Beach. We stayed there for two days. And so, when I got back, Evan Hartsfield said, uh, How was the trip? I said, Everything went well. He said, You stopped at the beach? I said, Yes, sir. He said, How wicked is that? You out there with those naked women out there and you get naked, man? He rebuked me up and down. That's all he had to tell me. That was enough for me. That's all he had to tell me. He went up and down me like a skateboard. And I didn't say, man, I'd go where I want to. Say, yes, sir. You're right. You're right. And when I go to the beach, it will be my first time this way in 20 years. I haven't been that way in 20 years. Van Horn and I, when we first came here, we went down one day. We hit about three months. I said, no, sir, boss, man. This is wrong for me to do that. We went fishing. We didn't go to the beach. We went to fish. I said, I can't do it. I have not been back since that day. I didn't fish for six years. I didn't even go. If, if I did anything, I threw some of the line here. I didn't go outside of these ground to fish. And the only time I went out there about six, seven years, Brother Lindsay and I, he took me to a pond. I said, Brother Lindsay, big fella, 10 minutes, I haven't gotten a bite. 15, I said, I'm going to take me home. You come back. Well, he came back with the fish. He said, well, preacher, you, you ain't got no patience. I know. Take me home and you fish. I want to conclude here. Hallelujah. It says in, in Mishli 25, uh, it says, evil men understand not the judgment. See, evil people don't understand them. They don't even understand the consequences of what they say in their actions. They don't realize what they procure upon their sons and their daughters. That, that's crazy. Yeah. Evil men understand not Mishpat, uh, but they that seek y'all understand how many things are. Uh, we understand all things, don't we? We set our affection on the things that are above and not on the things that are earthly. And those that seek Yah, they understand all things. All things. All things. They understand all things, those that seek Yah. And those that do not, they don't understand judgment. Also in the book of 2 Peter, Kephah, 2 Peter, he gives us an account of those that are exceedingly wicked. This one we don't understand, uh, the book, because we're wicked. He says in 2 Peter 2.12, he talks about this mindset. They are not brute beasts. Uh, that's what a, Bruce, a brute beast does, doesn't it? A brute beast appetite cannot be satisfied. That big bull out there, he, got, he gets on the one that produces his daughter and he breaks the daughter's back, doesn't he? And that's what a brute beast does, not satisfied. Never contented. Y'all get quiet, huh? Hallelujah. It's still all main. It says, uh, but these are not rebuilt beasts. They're made to be taken and destroyed. Uh, they speak evil of things which they understand not. Uh, and so they will talk in the element of things. They don't even understand what they're saying. Hallelujah. They're brute beasts. Yes. I said again, I've never looked at a woman that I lusted for in my heart. Said I wanted her. And no man could ever come to me and say that. I will kick his head in. I'll give a damn who he is. You don't, if you got some corruption, you don't try to corrupt nobody else. He says, they speak in evil things they understand not. They shall utterly perish in their own corruption. You see, now if I'm corrupt, I'm going to perish in my own corruption. So why do I want to destroy you in my own corruption? Why do I want to bring something to, to oppose the book to your mind when I know I'm corrupt? The wicked shall not understand. And that's why this is a wicked, that's why a man can talk to another ach, he doesn't care what he says. That's why daughter, because they're wicked. And they're trying to open the door to corrupt your heart. You're corrupt enough already, but they're trying to corrupt your heart. That's why words have to be few, dogs and on your words have to be few and wise. You have to know what you have to govern your mouth. You ain't no damn fine thing you may think you are. Nothing fine about us, we're flesh, we stink. 
No fine man. I don't even look at myself as some kind of fine man. I just know who I am. I know I'm a man. This is what Shaul, I mean, uh, Shalomo says in Koheti, in Ecclesiastes. I have a few verses I want to read. Ecclesiastes 9-11. This is why we don't understand. We don't understand this. We don't understand the book. We don't know what the book says. Ecclesiastes 9-11. He was very discouraged when he saw this. He says, I return and saw under the sun that the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong. Neither yet bread to the wise. See, those men that think they're wise, they don't get the lechem or the knowledge of Yahshua. Nor yet riches to men of understanding, not even the Oshia, the happiness of Yah with men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. He said, but time and chance happen to them all. And that's what he says. For man also knows not his time. We don't know the time that we're in because we don't know the book. He says, listen, he gives us a scenario. He says, so as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, a net of rock to eat them, to consume them. He said, the birds that are caught in snares, so are the sons of men snared in evil time when it falls suddenly upon him. Why does that fall upon us? Because, can I tell you this? We justify everything but Yah. You justify you. You, just, you don't justify your neighbor. You don't justify their rightness. You always justify you. I justify my complaining, my murmuring, and muttering. You don't realize you're calling on demons. That's what muttering is. It's a form of worship. I'll teach you on that one day and show you. When they muttered among Israel, yeah, he sent the death upon them. He sent serpents that represent the very tongue of them. And when they looked up to see the very nature of them, then that, what that represented the serpent was that you, you realize that's what you are. You're esteeming that above me. Everything has a wisdom to it, Yisra'ah. It's just that men don't understand what's written in the book because they don't give a damn. They don't care about understanding the book. Again, back in Proverbs. Proverbs 17, 15. This is what we do when a man's mind, a woman's mind is in captivity. This is what we do. You can never do this, Yisra'ah. You will never understand. The wicked shall do wickedly and shall not understand. Isn't that what Daniel Yah said? This is what Shaul, I mean, Shalomo says in Proverbs 17, 15. He said, he that justify the wicked. The wicked don't understand, but when one justify, how do you know that they're wicked? When you know that they are criminals against Torah, they defy Torah, will you justify them? Oh, the world is sweeter than those that say they love you. No, you're not sweet, you damn fool of a man. You stupid woman, you're not sweet. You don't see no excellent in no one else because you're not doing anything excellent. He that justifies the wicked and condemns the just, he that say that, oh, he is so nice, oh, she is not nice, he ain't nice, he is not nice, but yet he's an ach. She's in an ahot. She fell. She did something simple. Tell me how damn right you are. And you justify the wicked over them. Uh? The wicked give you a piece of bubble gum. Oh, they're so nice to me. Uh? And the just man through his time, uh, he has given up his much. Uh, he has made sure you had this. Uh, he has made sure that came into your house. Uh, he has done that. You justify the damn wicked. Uh? He said, even they both are an abomination. A to a bar Thou nidda, a nasty rag of a minister woman. Is that what the damn wish she takes it off? Yeah. Even they both is a nidda, they an abomination. You justify the wicked? You are just as wicked as they are. That's why you need to understand the book. And have the mind. Yeshua told them, uh, even as... Even as Stefan, he says, uh, he says, uh, why do you always resist the Ruach of Yah? You're just like your damn papis. They couldn't handle the man. They stone him. They kill him. They gnashed upon him with teeth. You never justify the wicked. Oh, my son, he's nice. And you condemn that brother, son? You condemn your sister? Well, oh, oh baby, I, she said that, so I'll leave it at that. But what have your son said or your daughter said? It's wicked. And this doesn't affect the nation of Yah. We just continue our laws. We just, oh yeah, well, 
I'm wrong. I'm sorry. No, no, it's in you. Anytime something fester in us, it's constantly, there's a deeper root problem in us. There's something that is vile there. Now, is this my, not chance? There's something in you, honey. Something in you, man. So you, just, you condemn the righteous and justify the righteous. You condemn the righteous as a Torah and you justify some little weak, broke back boy. It's wrong. You that justify and the one that is wicked, even they both. Yes, to Abba, it is filthy, it is perverted, it is the nida. It is like a minister stinking rag of a woman that has sat in the sun for three or four days. And she put it back on again. That's filthy, isn't it? See, we don't realize how filthy we are. And we think we're getting by. And we think we can't say anything. Always, you, you daughters of design, you ought to read Proverbs 31 every day and see the beauty of that high yield woman, a strong woman. And that's how you ought to pattern your life. She keeps the house clean. How in the hell do you know what is right when your house is not clean? She keeps her house clean. She keeps it pristine. She rises up early in the morning. Her children say, bless you, mama. She rises up early. She doesn't lay on her ass and lay there all day. She gets up early in the morning. Her children call her blessed. They bless her. She doesn't lay on her ass. Get, Y'all get ready then. I, I, I get up after a while. There was one thing I could say. My mother, she didn't know y'all, but she was up before any of us. And as a young lad, I understood. I did, daughter. Please believe me. I saw the hardship of my mother going to have to walk to that bus stop carrying all of our clothes. We didn't have no wagon. I had to get to school. And she would take all of our clothes and take them. She worked at a laundry, uh, at a cleaner's. And she cleaned our clothes. And I never had, she'd bring them big bottles back. Sometimes she'd get someone to bring them home. And she had them big bottles, all the clothes wrapped up in that. She was, come on. That's why I didn't give my mother no hell. I didn't talk back to her. I didn't do like my other brothers and sisters did. I didn't talk back to her. I didn't like the fact she had men that sleeping and staying in the house. I hated that. I hated that. I hated that. You could hear the sound of that early Saturday morning, your children getting up. That wasn't right. I didn't like that. I can remember that. Yeah, I'm just telling you the truth. I didn't like it. It was wrong. My mother had six, maybe about six different men. It was wrong. I didn't like that. And I say you didn't teach your daughter the beauty of a woman. I understand your mother didn't teach you a damn thing. You didn't know a woman. I don't condemn you for that. Mother, that's the beautiful thing she got her daughter. She teach her the beauty of a mother. Hallelujah. You don't provoke your children to anger. Your damn hostile, wicked ways. Hallelujah. Train them up in the field, y'all. Yeah. Don't smell the run. Can I close here? Last thing here, yes, shy. Now, I'm not giving us no confirmation after this to make us feel nice. The prophet Yeshua, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Again, that's why we don't understand the book because we're calling Isaiah 5, 20. He said, woe to them that call evil tough. When you find one that said that this is nice or this is sweet and you know it's evil. He said, and that evil, and they say that tough is evil. Well, Yisra'ya is evil. No, we've all fallen and come short of Yah's honor and his expectation. We've not fallen. We'll fall prostrate, we'll fall down, and we'll pray to... But we all have fallen short of the expectation of Yah and Yahshua. I'm not going to condemn it. I had men to tell me things they have done. I don't condemn them, but I say, don't do it again. Don't fall like that again. You stay around me. You stay around me. I'll help you, and you help me. But want you to call Tov evil and evil Tov, and say, this wicked one is sweet, because this is your cousin... And say, I'm wicked because I tell you your wickedness. You can't even see the book. Some strangers nice, and those that have shared their love with you, they're not nice. You're wicked. He says, uh, and that put Hoshek darkness. Uh, you would take the darkest of things, uh, and you would allow that to obscure the light. And then you try to put light for darkness, say, oh, they're wicked, she's wicked. No, you're wicked, man. You're a wicked woman. Uh, and put bitter for sweet, uh, because you're bitter, you want to pretend you're sweet. You're not sweet. And sweet for bitter, he say, warn to them that are wise in their own eyes. And they're prudent in their own insight or their own sight. They think their own eye and they got something. But judgment, you judge others, you're going to be judged by that same standard. So I don't mind you judging me. You judge me. It's amazing that we will judge others. 
But don't judge me by that standard. You're wicked. We don't understand the Torah, the book, because of our own wickedness. Because of our own wickedness. And the wicked shall do wickedly. You hear something like this and then tomorrow you go do even more wickedly. And the next day you go even more wickedly. And the next day more wickedly. And they shall not understand. They shall not be able to discern. That's why we're not discerning because we're doing wickedly. We stop doing wickedly we will be able to discern. And we will never be able to discern as long as we're doing wickedly. And we are doing wickedly. And they shall not understand. They shall not be nah. They should not be able to discern. They should not nakha. They should not have an insight. They should not recognize what is of Yah. None. But those that are Sadiq have the characteristics of Yahshua. They understand. They discern both time and they understand the judgment of Yah. That's why they're quiet and their mouths are quiet. And that's why they just don't say everything. You daughters, every morning read Proverbs 31. Yeah. And balance yourself according to that. Begin to practice what they say. Rise up early. Can I read it before I close? Yeah. This is Yah's day. You're not going to do anything but eat and sleep. Yeah. There are folks that listen all day. There are folks that won't even go off this when we go off. That's a fact. They'll stay there. Now, brother, go, that I go in, the, his, his little show tell my wife, say, when Reak is on, he, shh, 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 uh uh. uh. Everybody get quiet. I want to read this. Hallelujah. Proverbs 31. I want to read this. We're going to close from here. Is that all right, Zachim? You come and close us. It says the word proverb, the Dabarim, the Milach, the Mu'el, and the Naba, the prophecy that his Emo taught him. See, his mother taught him the beauty of that. She said, what my son, what my son of my betim, my womb, my belly, and what the son of my vow, she says, give not your Co-act your strength unto the woman. Nor the ways that which destroys a king. Don't go according to the ways that destroy a king. Yeah? It is not for the kings, O Lemuel. It is not for the king to drink yayin, wine, nor the prince's strong drink. It's not for your mind to be polluted about the affairs of Yah when you're not stable. Least they drink and forget. The Torah. So when we drink of our own corruption, we forget the Torah. Well, baby, I was fine. When I, you weren't fine at all. Not at all. You were dirty. You were stinking just like everyone else your age. You weren't fine. You weren't fine. No, you weren't. Yeah, you weren't fine. You got just what you could get, all right? You weren't fine. I'm glad I got what I got. How about that? I like the way you talk, man. We talk, all right? He says... Uh, at least they drink and forget the Torah and they pervert judgment. We, the, see how we pervert judgment? We forget the Torah of any of the afflicted. We don't give a damn how someone is afflicted. We will pervert the judgment of Yah. Well, she ain't nice. How nice are you? How kind are you? Give not strong unto him. Give, not, give strong drinks unto him that is ready to perish. And wine unto those that be heavy of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Just cause them to be uh, inundated and consumed with their own things. And just let them get drunk. <laughs> they, you know, so they can forget about what the reality of Torah. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and the needy, the only and the dull. You should plead the cause. If, if there's an ark that is poorer than you, that it doesn't have the precise ability as you, you should please his cause. You should not put any burden on that ark. You should plead the cause of your chota. And you should not cause her to be bared down. You should not try to be shiftless uh, and, and not willing. It's wrong, Yisrael. Yeah. Then he says that in all of all this, uh, the wisdom of his mother, she says, who can find a high yellow virtuous woman? For a price is far above ruby. She didn't say that you, O king, your price. She said a virtuous woman, she's a woman of strength, of maturity. She's a beautiful woman. Everything that is governed by her wisdom is beautiful. That's a high yield woman. You can reject it. You can get mad. Get mad at Yah. But that's the beauty of a high yield woman. It says the heart, that's why people say, oh, don't trust nobody. It says the love of her husband, the safely but duck, trust. In her. You liars say don't trust no man. Well, 
This man got a jewel from Yah. It says his heart does safely trust in her. Why? Why? So that he shall have no need of no spoil. He doesn't need anything else. He doesn't need no infatuation. He doesn't need no arousement. Why? She will do him tough and not evil all the days of her life. A woman will do, a pure wife will do him right. She will not say, ooh, isn't he fine? You Jezebel. You don't even know what a fine man is. How do you even know what a fine man is? Come on. You don't even know what a fine man is. She will never do him evil. That's what a beautiful woman, a wife, she will never do him evil. Huh? She will never do it. He can trust in her. He doesn't need no, he doesn't need no arousement about no woman to say, you sure look nice, man. We were in a store one day and the woman, I said to the lady, just in a monotone voice, I said, ma'am, I'm 55. Older than that, do I get my discount? Oh, you're 55. I'm like, heifer, believe me, you walk in here in the dollar mart, I wouldn't even, you would not even be my type. Because I could go to the symphonies or somewhere like that. I could do me a little research and, and I can talk the symphony talk. And find me someone that's at least making money. Well, what do you do? Well, I'm a builder. I, I, I labor hardcore. Well, that's, that's so exciting. That's, that's beautiful. You're so strong looking. So I want to go to the dollar mart looking for one. That's a fact. That's a fact. You say what you want to. You both know I wouldn't go there. That's right, my friend. She will do him tough and not evil all the days of her life. This is what she seek now. She doesn't seek folly and damn gossiping. She seeketh wool and flat. And she worketh. Look at this word. You know what this word willing mean? It's taboon. It's yafit. She works willingly with great pleasure with her hands. Now, how many women work willingly with their hands? She, whether it's picking beans or breaking beans, she does it willingly. Whether it's cooking or washing, she works willingly with her hand. She is like a merchant, her. She is so sharp, she's like a merchant ship. She brings food from afar. Her words are full of food, her meat. Her akhal, what one consumer of food, she brings meat, she brings something from afar. She rises also while it's yet night. Hell, we don't rise when it's yet night. That's what it says. It challenges us, doesn't it? It's a challenge to a man that he makes sure his house is in the perspective order of Yah. She rises while it's yet night. She rises while it's yet Yahil. Dark. Yahil. She rises while it's night. And she gives meat. She pray to her house. So she walks in the room. She anoints. Only thing we're anointing is a damn refrigerator. We may rise in the night, but it's for cookies and donuts. Believe me, yeah? Talk to me, Yisrael. You, you, get, you get mad at you. She rises in the night. She gives meat to her house. She makes your babies. She looks after them. Her man is sleeping in the bed. She says, bless him. Yeah, he's been labor. That's what she does. And a portion of her maiden, those that are sister, oh, these are hope, man. You, I didn't feel well yesterday, and they made sure they took care of that. They watched my youngins. Oh, yeah, I pray for that. A hope, bless her. <laughs> now, hell, we despair one another. I'm talking to you and this house. This is y'all's people. She considered the beauty of that Field. That doesn't mean she go buy her farm. She considered the merchandise and she buys it. She know that this field, as the Torah speaks, that uh, those that labor in the field for certain hours of the day, and those that, uh, that, 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 that the great gem is hidden in the field, the one will buy the field and search for that riches of the truth of Yeshua. She buys it. And with the fruit of her hand, see her hand, she plants. She makes sure that her hands are busy and she let her action speaks greater than her damn words. That's what she does. When she's in agony, she's still. There were old mothers in the days. I watched my grandmother and I watched that old woman. They labor, they work with arthritis and every damn thing. That's a fact. That's just a fact, Yisrael. 
She girds her loins with truth. She, she put on her girdle, her loins uh, with strength. Uh, and she strengthened her arms. Uh, she perceived that her merchandise is tough. She know everything about her is right. She know that her words are tough. She know that her attitude is tough. Uh, her candle, the light of Torah, the near. Her candle goes not out by nothing. The, the deepest of despair situation. Her light, the beauty of her countenance. Uh, in the midst of darkness, when the wolves are waiting to destroy, they see us. Oh, oh, no, wolf. Don't eat her. Eat that dirty heifer. I'm glad he breaks it down simple to me. You all are too complicated for me. She lays her hands to the spindle of the sewing machine. And her hands hold the distaff, the staff of correction. She stretched out her hands to the only. She knows those that are poor physically, poor mentally. And she extends her hands. Even though her hands are weary. In the old days, you know how that's how they would do it? They would extend their hands when they didn't have nothing. When they only had a little bit of flour, they would have it away. And they didn't have but a cup of sugar, they would give at least some tablespoons away. She extends her hands to the poor. Yes. She reaches forth her hand to those that are in need. Says, Baby, I know you need, but my need, I know I got a big need, but here, you take this. Use it, take this. Did they do that in the days? Mama, sure they did. You know, there are things I can remember here in the South. I remember those things. You know, I can't remember, I can't remember a chronological event two years ago in my life. I can't remember two years ago in my life. But there are things that were impregnated in my mind, and y'all put them there for this reason, for this, for this account today. And I would watch them. I would watch them when we would have the Sunday, fourth Sunday gatherings. Uh, and that's what it was, the fourth Sunday, not the fourth, but the fourth and they were gathered on the little uh, concrete cinder block uh, buildings. Uh, and nobody said, this is my own. I'm cooking this for my family. Me. Hell, they brought it all together. And then those that didn't have, they got a little good, a little that. that. We are so damn greedy and so suffer. We don't give a damn about nobody. You know, I said I've been here all these years. I was the first one here. Yeah, I was the first one here. My issue on I. I said, you know what, baby? I have never asked for a special meal. I've never, I've never, I said, because I eat anything you, you cook for me. I don't have no problem with that. I've never asked for a special meal. I've never asked for anything that I like. I like anything as long as it's cooked. I like chicken. I like fish. I like steak. Mm. I like french fried potatoes. I don't like them little skinny fries. I like the big wedges. I like wedge potatoes. I like collard greens. I like smoked turkey necks and smoked turkey wings. You name it, I like it. If it's food, I like it. I got some Cornish hands out there somewhere. I know how I'm going to do these. Ah, they were going to be right. I like food. Period. Period. Cake, pies, honey buns. I like it. Mm. I like it. She looks out for the needy. She is not afraid. Oh, it's cold. She's not afraid of the snow. For a household, for Yisrael, she's not afraid of her discomfort. I don't feel like getting up. Let somebody else do it. No, that's wrong. For all her household are clothed with the beauty of the covering of the cloak of Yahshua with scarlet. I'm going to teach you on the colors again. I know I began. I got the messages. I'm going to show you all something. She makes herself coverings of tapestry and clothing and silk and purple. She's a beautiful woman. When she goes, people look at her and say, wow. She doesn't need to draw attention to her. The attention is drawn because of her beauty, her astuteness when she walks in the midst of the market. Men look and they honor and they love her. Yeah. Something is twisted in your damn mind and you're dressed in a way that that man want to go to bed with you. You're sick as hell. I'm not going to stop talking like that. You're a stupid boy. You're a stupid woman. Because someone look at you, they think you're fine. They may say, boy, she sure looks silly. They look at her, I, I look at women at times, I, I want to say, you know, you're a silly looking thing. I just look at them. You look dumb. You're an insult to a woman. And of course, they get afraid of me and they, they don't look lonely. You're an insult. You check it out. Hey, girls, that's so damn stupid. 
I will never do that. I don't, care if ring, I don't care if they call me and say, your wife is dead. When I get out to the car, I find out she's dead. Okay, well. Hey, girl, you know. And they look back at you and I'll just look at them. You waste my time like this, you silly, loud mouth woman. Simple, they loud, they know nothing. That's wrong. Daughters, your conversation should always be quiet. Nobody should hear you talk. You should not ever put yourself in a position that people can see you. Go somewhere and hide. Go somewhere. And I'm like, get off the damn cell phone. Get, get out the line, woman. You want to impress? Everybody got a cell phone. You're so silly. You want to impress somebody you think you're the only one? That's so stupid. But there are people that do that. There are people that do that because they're dumb. Verse 23, see this kind of woman. Her husband is known in the gates. Her husband is Yada. He is known in the gates. When he sitteth among the elders of the land, when he sit among wise strong men, they will say, Man, what a woman. She's a gem. When he sits among them, she makes fine linen and sells it. She delivers girders to the merchant. This is her strength. Strength and honor are her clothing. See, that's what, it's not some colorful outfit. That's her clothing. I can leave. She got strength. She's not afraid of the cold weather. She rises up in the night to make sure her house is taken care of. Women today are lazy as hell. They will sleep all day. They sleep to the last moment. They don't even brush their teeth properly. They don't even wash their body properly. I don't know how you do it. You know what? If I get up, if I'm going to walk in the morning, if I'm just say if I'm going to exercise, go to the gym. Well, if I'm going, if I'm going to the gym at six, well, I'm up at five, quarter to five. I have to. I can't even get acclimated. I can't get up at ten minutes, go to the gym. My teeth all dirty. I don't have to brush my teeth. I know they look ugly, but I say, ah. I say, I have to brush them. I have to brush my teeth. I got to wash my face. And she says, Why you do all that? I said, Because I don't know. So I sit there and I. I mean, do a little studying. I mean, okay, I'm ready to go. Then I go wrong. But I don't get up at 10 till and go and do my thing. And then, nah. She rises while it is night. That's what she does. She opened her mouth with wisdom. And her tongue is the law, is the Torah of kindness. Everything she does is kind. Well, she shared her fair shirt back to me. Well, she rebuked me because she's still. Come, can I ask you a question? I'll just use that as a gap. Don't be silly. How many children you got, daughter? Talk so I can hear you. Do you beat them on the side? Is that a law of kindness? Sure it is. You don't break no bone? Because if you did, I'll be the first. I'll put you in jail before your husband gets it. Yeah, I will. She's going to jail. Period. I told her half a hit she would take her children, put them in the tub and beat them. I said, you Jezebel. I said, if you ever do it again, I will call the law on you. That brutal. And you wonder why the son is a fag and now the daughter is a bull dagger. Crazy ass woman. I said, if you ever, I was, I'll never forget why I said that to you. Well, she had a husband. She had a boy. I was standing right there, right there by that building where the, uh, where the, Right there by the garbage house, right there. Right behind it. And I looked at the baby and said, what's wrong, baby? She said, oh, my, mama beat me. What? She put me in the, she always beat us. She put in the bathtub and we take a bath and then she beat us in the water. <laughs> That's right, yes, sir, yo. I got mad. I said, Rafael, go get that Jezebel. Get her now. Let's get that cow. I said, if you ever do the cow. to put you in jail. You know, baby like that? That's wrong. That's cruel. That's wrong. And it's cruel to do a child like that. It's wrong. I said to little Sipur the other day, she said, she would tell me, she showed me how she get a spanking. Of course, she, she I said, show me. I want, I want to see how you get spanking. Show me. She grabbed my hand and said, she got, bah, bah, bah. she got a nice little stand to And this how she this is how they, I'll just, uh, uh, forgive me. This is how, he goes like this. 
Show me how you know. I, I'm not worried about knucklehead. I'm, you show me how you. Pat, pat, pat. So mama is always looking like, Ray, uh, be quiet. So I said, uh, you tell the people, you tell them that I'm going to beat somebody. She said, no, sir. I said, no, you just repeat. Just say what I said. She said, no, no, sir, Papa. I said, no, no, no. You tell the people that I'm going to beat somebody. It wasn't long when she said, no, sir, I'm not going to tell them. Well, when one of the persons came there, she says, Papa said he's going to beat somebody. And, of course, this lady here wants to tell her, well, uh, she was showing him how she gets a whipping, so Papa said he's going to beat somebody. Yeah, my word still stands. Take nothing back. Let me close here. She opens her mouth with, a, with good kindness, with wisdom, and the, her tongue is the law of kindness. She looked well to the ways of her household. That's a woman. Everything is about her household. Her children, her man, above all, her man. It begins with her man, then her children. She looks well to her household and eating not the bread of idleness. You all need to just, next time you all get together, get the concordance and look up the word idle, idleness, and just teach on that, all right? She doesn't eat the bread of idleness. Hallelujah. She doesn't eat that. Uh, her children arise up, and they call her blessed, her husband also, and he prays her. Many daughters were virtuously, but you excel them all. So the babies rise and say, Mama, you're so blessed. Bless you, Mama. I know the little ones can rise up moody. But they rise up and say, Bless you, Mama. When she got young daughters, they rise and say, You're so precious, Mama. Can I kiss you? Come on, Mama. You hell, you need to work on you. They rise up and they call her blessed. They run to want to see you. Because there's no... I watched how my mother, she was... You know, uh, you know, sad because she never whipped my young brother. That's why he's in the condition. She never whipped my sister. I never, but that woman would beat the hell out of me. I'm just being honest. Say what you want to. She say, drop it. That, that frustration. And come on, she'd take a drop cord like that, and I'd take out my shirt, and she would beat me like that. When I got old, I would tell her, I said, I don't know why you did it, old woman. I say, because my daddy, you wanted him, and he was a fine big boy. I had never seen the man. And he didn't want you. Oh, I could have said, no, you couldn't have. Because if you could have, you would have had him now. Stop it. She would get quiet on me. I said, you beat me because I reflected what he was. And you couldn't get him and you were mad. And so you took it out on me, old woman. I would talk to her like that. I said, but you didn't disappoint me. You did not uh, uh, cause me to be uh, dysfunctional. I said, I got by with more than you got me for I appreciate every rod you put on me because I look at them and I don't want to be like them. May I rock you all. We must understand the ways of Yah. We must understand the book. Come on, Zakin. Hallelujah. May Yah enrich you all. I don't care if I hurt your feelings either. How about that? Away, hallelujah. A Shabbat Shalom, Ko Yisrael. We do appreciate all those that are listening by via of live stream on this beautiful Shabbat Yahweh has given us. Let us take heed, Yisrael, to the words we have heard, to the knowledge, to the understanding, to the truth. And if you would do that, it will enlighten you. It will strengthen you. And it will give you the ability and the, the power to press and to endure. And to do all that Yahweh has commanded us to do in these laughing, last and evil days, Yisrael. You know, for a person not to take time and do the appropriate things that has to be done, whether it's concerning a wife and a husband, or the Ava or Ema to the, to the children, and one don't take the time and do the necessary things, there's no Ahava in that one. So we see the men of Yah that takes the time to do the things that are necessary, whether it's in Torah, whether it's in labor, and that concerns all of us, all, all you aim, all you hope. If you concern one for another, you would do the things which are necessary, that it be a strength unto the house. So we give total unto Yahweh for all things. On this day, let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. 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 Total Yah, are we tired? Hallelujah.
Yahweh has given us his Shabbat, Yisrael, Yah, that we can come into his presence, that we lift up his name. Hallelujah, that we rejoice at all that he has done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Our Yahweh, we barak you for this day you have given us, another day in which your Ahava, your mercies have been renewed. Abba Yahweh, we barak you for that. We ask Yahweh, those that have come near and far, that you would take them home. Abba Yahweh, your Melikim will be in camp around Yisrael. And again, we give you told out, Abba Yahweh, for Yahshua HaMashiach and all things. The only name you have given us in which we could be saved, Abba Yahweh. We do told that you in all things in Yahshua's name. We do pray. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat shalom, Ko Yisrael. Hallelujah.